What's up, everyone? Welcome to episode 35 of the Drunken Boxing Podcast, coming from the capital of the Middle Kingdom, Beijing. Spring is definitely in the air here, and things are warming up, and color is returning to the landscape. I hope wherever you are, things are feeling similarly pleasant, too. This is my favorite season for training, before the big melt of Beijing's summer arrives. Okay, let's get into some Mushin martial culture news. The first two episodes of In Discussion With were released. They feature a video discussion with Lavelle Marshall and Emmanuel Papa. And we had a very interesting discussion regarding Shuaijiao, Boch, history, and culture. As the chat went on longer than expected, I split it into two episodes. The first being a general open discussion, and the second being a Q&A session with questions submitted by the public being answered. It was a highly enjoyable and enlightening discussion. So do go check it out. I have some future episodes planned with interesting guests, and you will be able to submit questions for them to answer. So keep an eye out for announcements regarding these. I also subtitled and released an episode covering Tian Chao Shuai Jiao of Beijing. It presents the history of Tian Chao Shuai Jiao, as well as its characteristics. If you are interested in more of the roots of modern Shuai Jiao and its various forms that it took, check it out. Additionally, the third and final episode of Liu Jing Ru, Flow Like Water, Drift Like a Cloud, has been released. Although this documentary series was released in Chinese some time ago, it is an interesting glimpse into Liu Jing Ru's life and history, and I have subtitled and added relevant information to it for the English-speaking world to enjoy. Okay, moving on. As always, the various Mushin martial culture merchandise is available on my Teespring store. There is a variety of items available now, so go have a look. If you feel like supporting this podcast indirectly, getting some of the Mushin martial culture merchandise is one way to do it. You can find the store at the link in the show notes. Quite recently on the store, I released a parody shirt uh, titled Mongolian Judo. So if you've watched the Hidden History of uh, Shuai Jiao series, uh, you will kind of understand what the joke is about. Um, but it's kind of trying to play on the idea of the purported history, the reality of the history, and how interesting that history has been presented. Uh, so this is a parody shirt that uh, I kind of put together just for fun. It's tongue-in-cheek. Uh, it's just meant to have some fun with that and uh, present an interesting retro image of Shuai Jiao on the t-shirt. So if that's your thing and you have a good sense of humor, go on and check it out. Another way to support this podcast, as well as all the Mushin endeavors, is through Patreon. There are general support tiers and a third tier, the Hua Jin tier, in which you can study the arts of Xing Yichuan and Ba Gua Zhang in depth. For example, now within the Xing Yichuan curriculum, we have started going into the 12 animals in detail. There is already a vast library of released lesson videos for both Xing Yichuan and Ba Gua Zhang, as well as their related Neigong practices. So if you are interested in learning authentic Xing Yichuan or Liang style Ba Gua Zhang, give the course a try. The Patreon site may be found at patreon.com slash Mushin Martial Culture. That's Mushin Martial Culture, all one word. Again, the link is in the notes. In other news, my Shijie, my big martial sister, Andrea Falk, has finally released her much-anticipated memoirs titled Beijing Bittersweet. Andrea, who has been a guest on the podcast in the past, is a pioneer in the martial arts and one of the earliest people to come to China and study the arts at the root. She was the first Western graduate from the Beijing Sports University, majoring in Chinese martial arts. I highly recommend her memoir, which is out in digital format now, and print versions will be available soon. The link to get it is also in the notes. Okay, let's go on to today's podcast. My guest today is John Nicklin. Originally hailing from London, John moved to Shanghai, where he started studying Song Style Xing Yichuan under Dai Xue Qi. He has delved deep into the art and has traveled extensively in China to various places, including Taigu, to research and study Xing Yichuan. He was also in Will's excellent documentary on Xing Yichuan on the Monkey Steals Pete's channel, which I highly recommend. So go check it out if you haven't. All right, let's get into today's episode. I give you John Nicklin. Okay, welcome to the Drunken Boxing Podcast, John Nicklin. Happy to have you here. Morning, Byron. Hi, everyone. <laughs> How are you doing? How's things going down in Hong Kong? Well, at the moment, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, it, it's a difficult situation, but hopefully we'll break through this wave and uh, things will get slightly better. Yeah, I heard that they're going to like everyone's going to stay home and you're going to have mandatory like they're going to try test everyone, right? Yeah, citywide tests. So, yeah, I mean, everyone is is staying home already, to be honest. Uh, oh. I don't think uh, yeah, I don't think people are going to the offices or anything. Okay. 
what 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 prompted this i mean apart from a wave i mean is has there been a lot of fatalities is there a spike in uh, in hospitalizations what, what prompted this well i mean hong kong hong kong you know basically had z- almost zero cases with the whole of the previous year yeah and um or, or and so i i think it wasn't really ready for this yeah it wasn't really ready for this this way like not not in terms of the vaccination level or the hospitals or whatever so it's kind of overwhelmed right now and uh and so that's why they're going to do this citywide test to try and mm. you know because if you identify theoretically if you identify all the cases and then isolate everyone and then get the cases back down that's the thinking right right i mean i've gone through it quite a few times over mm. here i think i've had yeah, know. I'm sure in Beijing, like the lockdowns are even more precise and uh, yeah. uh, sudden, right? Well, the, you know how, how Beijing uh, and, and China in general is managed. You've got your national government and you've got your provincial government and they're all branched down. You know, it's all scaled down. And then within like a mm-hmm. province, you'll have a city government and within the city, it's broken down into like areas and and uh, there's mm. and they directly report up. So it's very easy for them to like say, OK, this area close it off, send notice to everyone and test everyone. And we've had that a few times in my neighborhood, like, like, uh, okay, tomorrow morning, everybody come down to this little square that's outside of my, my, my building here where the eyes do Guang Changu every, every day. And, um, and, and they just set up, they just set up tents and they, they test everyone. And the results are out like the next day, literally. I mean, it's pretty efficient in that sense. So yeah, down down to the neighborhood, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I heard the same stories from my my shifu and and shishongdi in Shanghai, okay. like just just shutting down like one compound or one neighborhood. Yeah, yeah. Because what they did was at the beginning of the of the uh, pandemic, they actually put up barricades along those little neighborhood lines. So there's. In, in, before you could just walk in and out now there's only one in in and out point so it's 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 quite it's quite easy for them to like they just they'll put a notice up and won't let anybody in obviously if you you know even they, they try to do it when there's no work obviously so they're not going to mess mm. with everyone and then they close it off and they'll say okay from this time to this time everybody in this area go get tested so that yeah, works. I mean, I've had yeah, yeah. I've well, had I mean, testing. They, they, yeah. two years of practice, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've had testing at home even like last November. I don't know if you know that I was um, somebody in my in my family had eaten at a restaurant that two days before uh, somebody ate at who later test who later came down with coronavirus. So they have a 48 hour thing that anybody who went into that restaurant has to lock down. So basically, we got this notification that everybody in this apartment you know, you're not allowed to, to leave home for two weeks, you have to stay home for two weeks. And, and the local immediately, the local government people came, they put this thing on the door, it's not locked, it's not like people think they didn't weld us into the door, they just know if you've opened the door, yeah. right. And you're, they'll, yeah, tell, yeah. they'll tell you call the, the supermarket, which is down the road here, and order your deliveries and whatever, mm-hmm. but don't leave home for two weeks. It's pretty efficient. They'll they'll have like uh, they have an app that you're registered on. You have to submit your temperature twice a day through the app. Uh, yeah. And they had people come in those full hazmat suits like every two days and swab my nostrils, which was not pleasant. But mm. you know, and and they, that went on for you know the two weeks. So I was stuck home for two weeks doing that. But you know, nobody was sick. Obviously. I mean, you know, only, only 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 China could do that. Right. right? Like the never never underestimate like the government's ability to like trace and. <laughs> You know, and do shit uh, locked down but also yeah and do shit and also you know it would be it would be terrible if they just locked you down but you know the fact that they're uh sort of trying to get people you know they realize that locking down means that people can't go out to get food blah mm-hmm. blah blah you know uh, now you know there's you know, there on, of, honestly there's a lot of bad press about how a few messed up cases of how this was handled but that's not the norm. I haven't. I know many people that got locked down, and it was very similar to what I went through. It wasn't like, oh, they just ignored you, and you're you're running out of food. No, man, none of that. We were getting deliveries. Yeah, the, 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 only only the bad stuff makes the headlines. Yeah, right? of course. You know, like it's not it's not it's not new, it's not news if everything worked okay. Yeah, and and, <laughs> and you know the the problem with it is people have mixed kind of the political problems between one country and another. So. Even if you tell them, hey, it wasn't as bad as that, they're like, oh, well, you're a uh, this and that or uh, this and that. I'm like, no, I'm a nothing. I'm just telling you. Yeah, yeah, occurred. yeah. No, I, I have a, I have exactly the same problem with my fa- like talking to my family. Like, uh, it's it's I, I'm sure all of I mean, obviously now I'm living in Hong Kong, so it's slightly different. But yeah. 
you know, if, if you do try and say like, no, actually, you know, my lived experience was positive. Yeah. They're like, oh, well, you're brainwashed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And, you know, the other side of things, they're like, oh, well, all of that is unnecessary. Well, unfortunately for them, and I think it is kind of necessary. Look, the reality is most of us that are young and healthy will you know, we'll, we'll be generally okay, but there's a bunch even of people if, that even won't. Even if we get it, yeah, yeah. exactly. But there's a yeah, bunch yeah, of people yeah, exactly. that won't. Like, uh, so, anyway, we've yeah. been... It's, 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 it, yeah. uh, sorry, we've gone way off topic. Yeah. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. I think it's, I think just, it's important. Uh, there, seems to, it, there's a, there doesn't seem to be a happy medium. Like, mm. uh, you know, either, you know, it just runs rampant, right? Exactly. You know, where hundreds of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of cases... Or, you know, there's, there's obviously, you know, China is probably the only place able to and willing to continue trying to, to you know, go back to you know, what they call is like dynamic zero, right? Right, right. Well, look, the good news is, yeah. like with you guys in Hong Kong, you've managed to avoid a massive outbreak for all the serious strains. You're having a bit of an outbreak with a more contagious strain, but it's less dangerous in terms of its uh, symptoms and its illness yeah i mean if you if you look at it that way i mean we barely had any delta here like exactly. you know with omicron yeah sure it is uh, much more contagious but you know in, in terms of like the what is it the proportion of of serious cases is actually yeah. much lower right? yeah so if it continues in that way and you've managed to 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 handle it and and let's say there's another strain that comes out that's more contagious but less you know illness I mean, if that breaks out now, that's fine. You know, it's not, you, you've avoided the, the seriousness <laughs> of everything else, right? So, I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm not a scientist. At this point, I just hope that, so. no, no, no. I mean, the, at this point, I just hope this is the last big wave because, uh, you know, I, I, so my, my, personally, my wedding has been postponed for like a year and a half. Oh, already, no. So I guess, oh, no. <laughs> like I, I, w I would like to, you know, be able to celebrate with my family, but, uh, you know, it's, it's, Fingers crossed. It's amazing huh, how long this has gone on for. I was just looking back because um, I had that that issue with myself in November last year. To just And then we had December, we had Christmas, then we had January, Chinese New Year. Now we're at the end of February. But it's been literally mm. almost four months. Four months isn't a short time. And, you know, in mm. that period, I've been I've been nursing an, a pretty, pretty serious injury that I'm still trying to trying to nurse. But, you know, it doesn't feel like it's been four months. It feels like it's been two months or, you know, something like that. But when I look back yesterday, I was like, geez, it's been four months already and I'm still dealing with this injury and I'm still I'm still unable to move as as I normally do and do use my normal do my normal training schedule. So I mean, I, I'm genuinely interested in like what, because uh, I have a couple of uh, injuries that I'm nursing, but smaller ones. What's mm. what's your, what's going on with you? It's so strange. It was kind of towards the end of fall, you know, autumn last year. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I started to get lower abdominal pain when I was coughing and sneezing and sitting up. And, you know, I train and spar pretty hard. I do Chinese martial arts on a daily basis and I grapple and mm. um, three to four times a week as well so right the bjj three yeah. to four times a week jeez yeah i that's, mean that's at one lot. point i was going monday to friday every mm. morning because it's the the lunatics that mm. you know get well in the morning and that's usually you know for me that's perfect who is there on like a tuesday morning you'll be surprised man <laughs> you'll be surprised like the guys that were coming to the morning we were all mostly older experienced guys so it's like purple belts brown belts black belts you know it's not it's nothing below that really and there would be quite a bunch of us on average we'd have 10 people and we train really hard in the morning it's that's amazing yeah I on mean, a, like on a on a on a work day exactly like, on uh, a work day. really early in the morning not that early i mean we'd finish at about 11 and they'd all bugger off to work from there so you know what the hell yeah 10 people i mean that's just that's just unimaginable i mean hong kong as a my impression of hong kong as a place is people are really not Maybe this is a generational thing, but yeah. you know the 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 appetite for martial arts and kung fu is is really low here now. Unless you're talking about like uh, uh, muay thai as like mm. a, as a way of burning calories, right? I've you seen know, as that. A, like a fitness thing. Yeah, yeah, that's huge. That's huge. But like in terms of actually learning like a proper system and and like you know having the the passion to like go there like you're saying like BJJ for two hours in the morning and then and then go to work. That's that's really yeah I mean, maybe the situation is better for the southern art i mean because you know this is the here is like the cradle of some of the southern arts right so right. maybe the situation is better for them like you know if you're a wing chun guy here or you're a toilet guy here then maybe there's more people but yeah 
Well, yeah, my, a, my impression is a couple yeah. of the guys that would come in the morning, but this wasn't the majority. This was like maybe three, four of them. They were professional uh, combat teachers, so they were either teaching uh, wrestling or they were teaching MMA. Uh, so their their wow. schedule was better because they would usually teach their formal classes in the early evenings and and whatnot. So their mornings was wait. Like, are these are these are these guys friends with Shuja Dong? <laughs> uh, one or two of them. In, there was. I mean, the, I I put a photo up of me. I was I was squatting one of them. I had him on my back, and he's actually if you if you look at his face clearly, he looks very different now. He's actually a, he's a provincial wrestler here, but there's an old video of some Taiji guy going to Xu Dong school to to do some push hands with one of his students just to try him out. I think I saw that. And the yeah, kid yeah. the kid has yellow hair. That's that kid though. He doesn't have yellow hair anymore. But um, that was him. One or two of them were. One or two of them were. You know then. And, uh, he, he's, wait, oh, wait the, you, the kid with yellow hair you're talking about is the wrestler in yeah. that push hands yes exactly uh, video exactly right he used to what's it is it was it he he's like a beijing shui jiao guy like Not what's beijing. his face freestyle freestyle wrestling freestyle yeah freestyle wow wrestling. Uh, and he's a bit of a tank yeah, he's, he's a bit yeah. of a tank yeah, I was about to. That's exactly the word I was about to say. I mean, he looks like a bit of a tank. Well, you know, I actually met him years before we were training in the same gym. I, I of course, I met him at Chu Dong's gym. But there was another place that um, mm. a bunch of One FC fighters would go to open mat. Um, would there just be an open session? So that would be on a, like a Wednesday morning, and I used to go. That was maybe three years ago, maybe mm. four. Uh, you know, times mm -hmm. kind of mm -hmm. hazy with with COVID. And I would I would yeah, go with COVID. Yeah, yeah, I would go with my 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 jujitsu instructor because he would go to that open mat because it's you know I mean they need to get as much high level, uh, you know, test, high level practice yeah. as possible. Yeah, they don't yeah. get they don't get it mm. from their students. So it was three or four One mm. FC pros. And a bunch of other BJJ teachers in Beijing and a couple of wrestlers. And he would be there too. And I just remember this kid then because he was strong and he had very good uh, control. And, and, you know, he could take you down and control you. But he knew nothing on the floor, you know. so Ground game. Nothing. Didn't, didn't, hadn't done ground game. No. Right? But, he, you know, because of his wrestling base, it was very hard to do much to him. But once you've got him down, Stand up. Yeah. yeah, no, even once you've got him down, he doesn't really know what to do. He can, he's just on defense all the time. And I remember him from there. And there was another guy who also ended up training with us there. He's a little bit older. He was ex national team freestyle wrestling. And he's a really nice guy. He's one of he's he's one of my like good friends now. But I remember him because when we would do the stand up, uh, like we would do half an hour of just throwing each other right uh, without without going to right, the floor. Right. And at that time, when we were doing the stand-up, the first time I saw him at that open mat, of course, I knew nothing about his background. I didn't know who he is. You don't know anybody. Mm. You know, you're just there. You, and Yeah, yeah, you're just there. Every time I touch him, every time I touch him, like you think, okay, I'm going to get a collar tie. So you grab his neck, you know, as a step one. All right, the neck. No, the no. Neck, no yeah, neck hold. He wants you to, take a, take, to, to touch him. So the second you touch him, I was just flying through the air. And I was like, I had to, I really? looked, yeah. He, what? So wait, wait, like what was called? Like jia, jia bo, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. He would like, right. He, so you were trying to get that. No, I, as soon as I'd grab it, he'd make use of it, like twist and throw me over his shoulder or do something else really fast, like lightning fast, you know? So I learned very quickly Damn. with him. Yeah. I learned very quickly with him that do not engage immediately rather be more reactive with him and when i started playing like that he had a very tough time and that you know it's, you, you learn how to play with different i, different I didn't even, i didn't even know it's possible to throw from the tie oh crazy. yeah well, you, like you, it's so fast go meet some some good freestyle wrestlers they'll show you some weird and very fast stuff you know you you, you wouldn't you, wait but that that stuff that stuff is coming from like a, a quite shy kind of base well freestyle wrestling you know like like, these? like, like olympic freestyle but wrestling. i mean freestyle but I thought, in, is, is there a really strong, I thought most, because cause in Shanghai, most of the guys who ended up competing in like the, the official, you know, the judo competitions mm. all had a tr traditional shui jiao base. Yeah. Yeah, sure. I mean, so, sure. so you're saying like, this is separate, this is separate to the shui jiao scene in Beijing. It's like completely, freestyle wrestling. Scene. Completely. These guys were professional athletes. Like, uh, he was national team oh freestyle, freestyle wrestling. So... It's another level of stuff when you when you meet these guys, you know, 
you think you think you play with amateurs and you think okay you you you've got something you know decent then you go to an open mat with one fc fighters and a couple of ex-national right. team and wrestlers. nothing works yeah there's a couple of guys <laughs> well this guy or they or they counter throw you <laughs> well you they kind of give themselves away some of them because i remember there were a couple of americans that would come through and they'd be wearing wrestling onesies right so you know okay right. this guy's got a wrestling base so kind of be a little bit weird yeah yeah well in the u.s it's much more common right what's yeah. what's the college is like greco-roman well both the college tradition. both but a lot of it is freestyle in, in america i mean greco-roman is is this is i don't know if you know the difference there's there's certain ways and things that you're allowed to hold it's slightly more restrictive in fact it's a lot more difficult in terms of body strength than freestyle because there's a lot of restrictions on what you can hold and what you can use and what you can do with uh, oh right no i didn't i didn't know that so yeah with greco-roman i mean a lot of the guys will end up doing a bit of both but they'll they'll focus on one or the other and the freestyle guys are very very mobile very fast and you know very adaptive again they don't have a hell of a lot of knowledge on the floor like i remember the the one the one right. guy he had he was an american guy he came once or twice and he even had one of those um, right. s- state wrestling tattoos on his arm and he was wearing a onesie so I, was, <laughs> so I was like all right he knows what he's doing so you know you just you just you 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 play the game as best as possible but once i got him on the floor i just you know i arm barred him and he didn't right. really know what to do from there, right so. so they have they have yeah they don't have the ground game well they're not used to it yeah for sure so mm. but but the take wait is it actually the was... ground groundwork does does freestyle wrestling have groundwork at all? They do, but because of the rule set, they focus on different things. Remember, so they're trying to pin you. Right. You know, a lot of the yeah, time, yeah, pin because a pin is a win, right? Right. So you'll see they'll start like in for them, yeah, rest a referee's position, which is the one guy on your back or side, and you're on your all fours, you know, and uh, mm-hmm. you know they they work from there trying to be able to control and pin. So they're controlling aspect is really good that's what they but you know the you know they, they've got certain things that they can submit you with but it's not as extensively focused on as uh trained as, as bjj well, nowhere near as no, extensive as no BJJ it's not focusing train. on that as much so of course they they've come mm-hmm. from a very good base and then if they learn if they learn more stuff on the floor they're really good because they're very hard uh, they'll they, be yeah they'll be lethal right yeah they're very yeah. hard to take down and, and they're very fast and very good at it so I mean, that was why I started doing all of this. So I could start playing, like, using my existing martial, Chinese martial arts-derived takedown methods on people that weren't from that uh, mm. environment, but were doing more. So that that's kind of mm. how it evolved from there, mm. you know. But, yeah. Yeah, so- yeah I mean, that, that, whole, that whole forum, you know, it, it allows you to use, you know, almost your full strength. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, still end a couple of hours, hopefully, with no injuries <laughs> or um, minor injuries. Well, that's what, actually, this is, we've kind of veered off. We were talking about that. So, yeah, so mm. round about end of um, autumn, beginning of autumn, end of autumn last year, I just started to get that pain in my lower abdomen. And I thought, you know, I was doing a lot of training as, as I normally do. And I was mm. also doing... I mean, like, like on top of you, so you're singing every day. Yeah. And you're mat, like BJJ mat work four times a week four to five times That's a, a week, lot yeah. especially if you're doing like especially if you're doing the big spear every i don't know i don't know how often you do it yeah i, I try to do it every single day but you know um yeah. some, sometimes i'll do other weapons you know otherwise uh, otherwise you mm. neglect the others but so i thought it was just mm. an issue of being overtly stiff right i thought okay well i have increased a lot of things uh, in terms i was doing a lot more i prepared for a competition last summer so um I, right so training intensity wise yeah and mm. i was doing a lot more conditioning so i was like uh doing a lot more you know leg ab squat stuff uh, just to prepare for for that you know like particularly yeah, 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 abs, competition yeah particularly abs mm. i was doing a lot of like abdominal work more than i normally do so i thought it was just that but it just got progressively worse mm. it, like my whole lower abdomen mm. was painful and then it started spreading to my inner thighs my adductors you know like closing my legs and then oh it, right the inside nature yeah mm. so it was all of that and i didn't know what the hell it was so it just became worse and worse to the point that it was sore all the time like standing walking whatever and that was just around oh, that's bad man yeah just around november mm. i thought let me go to the doctor so i went to the doctor and they said all right well let's do an mri just to check your hips out and i was like okay and right. then, then i got locked down so i had to postpone the the mri um and um in the meantime, they gave me some tablets, which were like anti-inflammatories and this and that. And that's while I was stuck at home. So I was taking 10 days of that stuff. And literally, I felt better while I was on those tablets. Everything felt good. So I thought, oh, well, everything's good. 
But as soon as the tablet, uh, <laughs> as soon as the tablet's it, finished, it just gets... <laughs> yeah, it came back. So, but in the interim, yeah, in those yeah. ten days, I was doing what every every person shouldn't do. I was googling all my symptoms. So, I came yeah. I came across something which was interesting, which really sounded like what I had, but is not very well known. And it's something called a sports hernia. It's not like a normal hernia. Um, so it's not like uh, you know you've got a torn thing in your a hernia is the diaphragm right well like out with, of place with men usually a hernia is a tear in the abdominal wall and then your your kind of in guts push through it right so you see a little bubble. Yeah, right guts pushing through the abdominal wall yeah, yeah. so yeah. you usually men get it in their inguinal canal which is that uh, little right Qua. yeah right. basically in the front right. around your pubic area there or around the belly button because mm. there's a weakness there and you know usually people when they're getting oh, really? yeah because you know you get like gen you get like uh, congenital defects when you're born with it very common that there's mm. a, a weak spot mm. there but it's it's not that it wasn't that that's mm. not what a sports hernia sports hernia refers to groin and uh, soft muscle and core injuries so i didn't know all of this until i was reading about it that your adductors connect to your pubic bone and so does your um, your abdominal muscles. They basically connect on the same spot. So if you t damage one, it's usually the inflammation damages the other one and they pull against each other and they're supposed to be in balance. So if the one is slightly torn, then the other one starts to pull harder. That's probably right. why. This is one of those where one, one aspect of the body goes awry and then it sort of pulls everything out of place right right but, yeah so i kind of realized oh that sounds like what i've got and and depending on how bad mm. because you tear the abdominal wall around there too usually if it's very bad they have to stitch it and i was like oh god here we go do i need i, I mean i've had surgeries before due to martial arts but i didn't feel like having any more especially mm. not at 42 years old <laughs> Anyway, yeah. so I went to the doc here and um, they've never heard of a sports hernia and the normal doctor up the road. What? Yeah, it's a very specialized thing. If you look this up, it's very specialized. I mean, there's not a hell of a lot of doctors that know what, what? a sports is, hernia is. Is there a Chinese term for it? Yundong, yundong shanxi. So sports hernia, basically. Shang, shanxi, shanxi. Yeah. Okay, I, will, I know that term, right. Okay. So it's... Yundong shanxi. Yeah. And it's been, it's been very interesting because I went up... To the doctor they're like oh your hips are fine just rest so i was like nah but i've read that i can't just rest if i just rest it's gonna feel better and if i don't deal with it it's oh that's that's terrible advice yeah. yeah yeah it's gonna come back and then i i i kind of you know I, I i was doing very i had to let it rest just in the first week or two to let the inflammation go down and then um mm. i went back to uh, the doctor who deals with rehab but you know my hospital up the road here is mostly dealing with old people and people that have like, yeah, yeah but anyway the doctor looked at me and she was like you know there is some some issues here that we think we can help go for some rehab to this doctor and, and she was really good actually she was looking at her protocol yeah. for rehabilitation was correct even in terms of sports hernia but she didn't know that it was a sports hernia so she was doing the right thing huh. but you know after it's been it's been two and a half months that i've been doing this right like two three times a week and I'm, I'm still not i'm i'm not really doing all my training because of this and i've basically stopped sparring since december last year because Wait, what, what are they what have they given you to like have they given you exercises yeah yeah yeah, a whole bunch of exercises so the first thing is to just kind of get the inflammation and the everything to calm down so there's a whole lot of like right. you know stretching and relaxation of the muscles um so i right. I, I just remember when i went because they don't deal with athletes right so the first doctor who inspected me she was like trying to push on my hips and she's like i cannot yeah. i cannot feel the bones it's all it's covered with flesh <laughs> she wasn't used to having that much <laughs> anyway but anyway so she did she's yeah. been doing the right things in general and she found some other issues that i developed like in terms of overtraining with what we do with Xingyi and bagua there's like certain things we overdevelop and certain things we neglect yeah. and when those imbalances occur mm. i mean that could be part of the reason why i got i got injured it's long term over training on one things and under but i mean okay this this is i think is uh i don't know whether you wanted to get into the wider discussion so there's you know this strain of thought mm. in certain branches of chinese martial arts where i mean i'm naming no names naming no people yeah but uh where everything has to be loose this like ultimate relaxation yeah yeah pie yeah Right. Mm. Uh, and I think like, you know, having trained for, you know, obviously I, I, I train nowhere near as intensively as you, but uh, having trained for, you know, 10 years by now, 
I, the more and more I feel that approach is wrong. Mm-hmm. Like, and it's genuinely bad for your, like, if you're talking over like, a, you know, 30, 40 years, it's really bad for your health. Oh, I, I agree. My teacher doesn't even believe that. And he's in his 70s, you know. He, mm. he, his, his whole approach is more like, you can't just be soggy. You can't just be completely loose all the time. But everything mm. should... Don't, 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 yeah. Exactly. You have to be balanced. Yeah. So in other words, what he's trying to say is that you've got to issue force. You've got to be hard at the right point, focused mm. on the right time. And you've got to then not, mm. be, not be hard and not be uh, forceful in at the wrong point mm. in a technique. So it's, it's learning how to do that. Mm. But then in the same time, he's like, and as you get older, you have to focus on different mm. things in terms of your body to keep it in balance. So for him, it's always been about balance, right? So that's the key here. Do the, he, he's, mm. he's not averse to telling somebody to do some addition. Like big spear is strength training. I don't know what people, you can't, yeah, yeah. You can't do yeah, big yeah. spear and be soggy and soft and not use your muscles. Yeah. I mean, come on. Mm. So, mm. But he'll be like, cool, but you got to do it all in balance. So you got to work on, okay, mm. if you're strengthening these, strengthen those. If, you, if you're mm. using these muscles and they're getting stronger, then make sure that mm. you're also making sure that you mm. stretch them properly and, and mm. do things like that. Mm. Otherwise, it's the imbalance, which is right, which is what, you know, basically happened with me, mm. but for different reasons. It's the imbalance that injures I mean, that's, that's really, it's, it's really good. I mean, your big spear is the best example, right? Like, you know, the whole point of the big spear, you know, the three meter or four meter one mm. is you can't do the technique just with your arms. Exactly. Like it's, it's actually, imp- or it's very, very difficult and you won't get the shake. Right? Exactly. Like, you know, that, that's why that goes back to like my people would always say spear is the corrector. Exactly. Just go back, do more, do a hundred, do 200 reps of the spear, then come back and tell me <laughs> whether you're doing it right or not, because otherwise you won't be able to do it. Well, exactly. So it's a wonderful tool because it gives you, if you're, you're getting stronger anyway, using it. But the most important thing is you're like, we, this is a very, I mean, I actually had a discussion with this on my online thing the other day because some people asked, but we kind of forget that when you're using, for example, the the basic idea of picking up a weight to be, to get stronger, right? The mm-hmm. weight weight is also it also amplifies and changes how far away you hold it from your body. So if you hold a weight very close to your core, mm-hmm. it's very easy to pick mm-hmm. up. But if you have that weight projected far away from mm-hmm. you, then it's like a meter away or two meters away or yeah. with a spear it's even yeah. further and further some of the weight is close yeah, to you yeah. but a lot of the yeah. weight is far away yeah. you end up having to use different yeah. muscles apart from just the thing that's holding the weight you have to use all the stabilizing muscles yeah. right so the spear is yeah. really cool in that sense because it's so long and the weight if you're using if you're not using a toothpick which people seem to think is another interesting thing today but yeah. if you're using a nice <laughs> dense thick heavy piece of wood that's long you know, you're going to end up using your body as a whole. There's no other way to, 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 to you, to do the techniques without, you know, dying of exhaustion. You inevitably are going to learn how to use your whole body correctly, not just your limbs, etc. And then you start to develop mm-hmm. the structural, uh, not only the structural alignment, but keeping that in motion. And that teaches you how to move without the weapon in your hand. So, it's a very good tool. And the same yeah, goes exactly. for Bagua's broadsword, although mm-hmm. it's got slightly different focuses, but the principle is the same. You're not supposed to use a light, small. It's, it's a weight moving slightly far away, further away from your body, right? Exactly. And, you know, the, what is it? The, the, the uh, da dao, right? Like they use the big, the heavy broadsword? Yeah, well, it's a, it's a Bagua uh, broadsword. So it's a specific broadsword that is just very big and long and heavy. So it's not supposed right. to be a flat. Oh, so it's very different to, to the... the the performance broadsword that's used for like uh, wushu performances now, right? Yeah, what's the point of that? I mean, I remember these these. <laughs> I mean, most most of those just look like they're foil. <laughs> they are foil. They're floppy foil. You know, you might as well be. No, I'm not going to say it. Anyway, um, I th- yeah, there was yeah, yeah. <laughs> there was a guy that um, a, a couple that used to come every now and then from from Europe and train with my teacher once a year, and they they were doing bagua, and I remember when they started doing broadsword. Um, they would, my teacher would take his sword down. My teacher's sword is the same one that he gave me one as well. We both have the same one and it's, they don't make them like you have to order them like this. It's, it's big, yeah, it's custom, it's custom made, yeah. solid. It's, it's does, it's not floppy. It's solid steel. It's heavy, you know? And you know, he was teaching them with that. I mean, you walk two circles, just holding that thing and your arm starts to be like, Oh my God, you know? 
So yeah, yeah, yeah after yeah. about you can't even hold it in the correct height. Yeah. So after three days, because you know I'd I'd be there training in the mornings too, and then and they came with their own swords and. And I'm like, oh, cool, you brought swords, nice. What did you buy? He said, oh, this is really good. And he takes it out, and it's this floppy light thing. And I'm like, why did you, oh, no. why did you buy this? Oh, because it's light. I'm like, this guy doesn't get it. I just went totally, off. <laughs> you're totally missing the point. You tell, I mean, the, I, look, I, I don't do Bagua. Obviously, you know, I, I maybe have a couple of friends who do. But, uh, you know, Fu, I think Fu Song, right? The yeah, famous yeah. Fu, like, Bagua master, like his... His brought now <laughs> that gives you an idea of what the what you traditionally should have been training with, right? right? Well, take <laughs> take into consideration he wasn't a very tall guy, but you know the swords like with mine as well. If I put the tip on the floor and have it vertically next to me, it comes up to about my shoulder, mm -hmm. if not a little bit more. So it's not Jeez, a that is a huge broadsword. It's not a small thing, right? So, but the nice <laughs> thing is if you buy the solid ones and have it made, I have, I mean, I have that with my straight sword, my normal straight sword, my normal broadsword as well. I had them made thick, traditional, heavy, mm. right? I'm close to what mm. a real sword weighs uh, of those, of those dimensions mm. and, and solid. If you buy them like that and have them made, you're going to spend up more money, but you'll never need to buy another one. You'll buy one and that's it. If you mm. take care well, of it. I mean, it, look, these, these days, these days it is hard to get, um, the right weight and like weight distribution and the strength of the sword because you know the market demand is not for that no right? like the market no you know i'm sure 90 percent of these these shops or, or sword makers like the market demand is for the floppy wushu stuff right uh you know so i'm sure you had to do a custom order yeah yeah, yeah. To, to some where, where did you like is it somewhere in Hernan or no or it's, got it from? it's from Longchen. That that I had the I had a oh gun. long chair yeah. okay 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 yeah 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 right I've had uh, and they they do custom orders well I I've known them for like twenty years so I call, I call the boss directly oh wow and tell them what I want made and then they make it I mean I've had I've had three or four training swords made for myself I made one for my teacher as well um of uh of, of one of the normal broadsword so not the bagua broadsword a normal mm. broadsword when i made mine i mm. had one made for him too because his was a bit it was a bit worse for the wear and um mm. and then what i did was i took the handles off when we got them and i sent them to another famous swordsmith he makes like handmade swords you know like high quality swords and i and i got him to put ray skin wow. he wrapped the handles for me in ray skin so they're training swords but the handles have been wrapped in ray skin and he cured the, the wood and wrapped them in ray skin and then sent them back to me. And then I did a, I did a, a handle wrap over that with a traditional kind of Ching knot method that I know how to do. So the handles cost more than the swords. Wow. But anyway. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, this is this is a real martial artist Christmas present, right? It's like, totally. what would you like for Christmas, Byron? Uh, I'd like a Qing Dynasty broadsword. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but I also had the, some guys in Long Tren make like like uh, combat swords, like you know, sharp combat steel right, swords that you could actually use for yeah. Duan Bing. Uh, Not for Duan Bing. You, is that the, actual swords? Right, right, yeah, sorry, Duan Bing competitions. Yeah. No, this is this is something that you'd use in like combat, but not, you know. Yeah, I had I had a few of those made by a couple of the guys down there too. Wait, so. but with sharpened blade? Yeah, like yeah, Kyren. yeah, sharpened blade. Which technically they're not supposed to do, but they do it anyway if you tell them to. Yeah, I mean, like you you got to be. I mean, just in China, you have to be careful with that, right? right, right. Because like, uh, the, but, I mean, I've I've been stopped in the UK before just for carrying a wooden. I know katana. UK. I mean, it's yeah. a long time ago. Yeah, but UK is different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's stupid. Yeah, but anyway, mm. so that's what, but I mean, coming back mm. to the training swords, if you have them made well and you take mm. care of them, you're not going to need to buy more than mm. one, you know, you'll train with that forever. Mm. So, so it's worth mm. it in the end. If you buy these floppy things, they break. Mm. I remember when I, oh, no, I mean, that's, that's, yeah. that's pointless. Like, uh, and it's not good, not good for your training either. Cause you get used to the wrong weight. Well, it's, it's got no correlation to the, the technique. You can't do half of the techniques you can do with mm. a floppy sword with an actual sword. It's just not possible. So, mm. so it's kind mm. of, what are you training? I remember when I was, when I was doing competitive wushu, they were towards the end of my career, I would break two or three broadswords in one training session. That's, mm. that's how, wow. how terrible they're. That's terrible. Yeah. I mean, it's just pointless. Yeah, really. 
Really? I mean, are we allowed to swear on this podcast? Like, yeah, no, go ahead. Quality. It's shit quality for sure. <laughs> but also, it's pointless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, what are you doing? Yeah. You're not swatting flies. Yeah. You know, it's like you know, and you know, you said this quite, mm. and it's quite quite interesting. The guys that sell and make weapons here, of course, they they make mm. and they will do stuff in line with what people buy and what they want, right? So, yeah, what people want, like you know, what the market is, right? Yeah. So I used to have start having. Like if you go back 15 years, you could still go to these places and find some daganza, like big, big sticks, big, mm, dagan, yeah, long, dagan. Yeah, mm. long, thick mm. sticks. Mm. And over the years, mm. you'd only get like very, very thin, short, but like ridiculously thin toothpick kind of stuff, you know, stuff. Mm. And, and I started asking them, I'm like, why the hell don't you have any daganza? And why is everything so the, the, thin? Yeah, three, four meter by lagan. He said, mm. listen, do you know how long it takes us to grow one of those long spears like yeah it's it's like 10 years 10 right? years up he says do you know how long it takes us to sell uh, to grow one of these short wushu staffs he's like one to two years within a year and he said and you yeah. look at the price difference it doesn't make sense and no one's buying the big ones except for a few of you lunatics basically that's what he said i mean literally it's just it's just the singing and the baji people buying those like three four meter ones exactly so it's like there's just no <laughs> point in us keeping them because the market is yeah. you know so so when me and my teacher would find good long daganza, we'd buy them. We'd buy all of them. Like oh yeah, I mean they're like like yeah. So I have four at home. Like I have four. My teacher also has three or four. He's got one that is really really nice that he bought maybe eight years ago. We yeah. bought it together. Yeah. I mean it's dense. It's long. It's dead straight. It's dead straight. Mm. You know, it's like when you get one of those, it's <laughs> yeah, like gold. It, this is yeah this is this is one of those weird singy things like you know when a when a singy person sees like a nice like daganza like the gleam in the eyes yeah exactly but you already have four at home baby yeah no but no but it's a really good one and i won't find another one for three years well the problem is they do dry <laughs> they get a little bit dry over time and sometimes you'll crack it right yeah. sometimes you'll crack it through training over time mm. so you want to yeah. have you want to yeah, have a few in reserve just in case so, reserve ones yeah. and you got you got to take care of them yeah. like uh, i I, I, okay, really weird. When I was living in Shanghai, so I had, because uh, the place I was living was slightly bigger than it is in Hong Kong, mm. uh, I had, you know, decent, decent three meter, slightly over three meter one, and it got stolen. Oh, shit. And then I got another one. And yeah, I was like, who the hell wants to steal a three meter bailagan? Right. Like, stuff. Like, what possible use do they have for it apart from, like, and um, where were and you? So I got another it, one. Where were you when it got stolen? I, I have right, so I, I cannot really remember what happened. Uh, I must have left it just outside my block, oh, like no. the door to my block. Um, but only for like it, it can only have been like half an hour, less than an hour, right? And uh, and it was gone. And so I got another one, and that one vanished as well. It's really weird. I bet, I bet you, you know, um, you know, you yeah, should be anyway. looking at, I'm, I'm telling you, you should be looking at the guys that do renovation and painting. Because I'm sure these are like, wow, if I put a paintbrush on the end of this, it's perfect. It's like someone, someone's, giving, someone's giving me like free extender tools. Yeah, <laughs> this is great. <laughs> so. yeah, yeah, no, I mean, so yeah, in Hong Kong, in Hong Kong like, you know, a, a, a standard Pailagan is basically the size of my living room. So, right. Uh, well, like, uh, I, I, yeah, I've had to switch to a smaller one here. But, uh, same as my teacher. But yeah, still try and get the weight. My teacher, uh, it's the size of his living room. So uh, it, it's behind the couch literally it, it goes along the wall uh, behind the couch <laughs> it's a, a classic classic place to put by Laga. exactly yeah. and then and then when he trains with it like because you you it's to get it outside is a whole other thing he trains in he does specific things with it in the living room and he's got slightly shorter ones that we can get outside right but in order for him to do cha like thrusting you know right, cha. he has yeah. to stand yeah. on the one side of the living room and open the sliding door on the other side of the living room so the spear can go like when he's thrusting go out the, you, the you know, sliding that's, door that's so funny because i i've done i've done the same thing my my house is pretty much exactly the same as what like you're saying your super's current places yeah so there's there's a door and to, in order to do la naja, i have to stand as far as i can from the door and i still hit it a few times. <laughs> well there you go so he, he stands the other way there's this little sliding door to a little like patio. These, these, these should be called like singing problems <laughs> exactly 
Yeah, see, Shingy problem solving. <laughs> Open the sliding door for Lana Ja. So, you know, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Modern, modern, modern life is not is not really uh, convenient for Shingy people. Right. <laughs> we right. need to we need to go back to living in the Sukhaya. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, I mean, I got my my big spears, my big poles. I live on the twenty fourth floor, so they don't fit in the elevator. And the my god, the, the, how do you even? Well, the staircase is pretty narrow, so it's like when you go from one floor to the other, you can't turn around, right? But so what I would right. when I get them here, I go, you know, up one floor, up one flight, stick the butt of the spear out that door, then the head goes around the corner, go up to the next floor, stick the head out that door, twist, turn, come around, and it just fits, you know, twenty four floors. That's how I'd get oh it. Oh my up. god! Well, I mean, I mean, high rise living is really not. You, I mean, you have to come up with some sort of Jerry rig solutions. Right. Right. <laughs> So. Just just to get down to the ground floor, right? Because exactly. you practice in a, you said uh, there's a wood near, like a yeah. forest near you. Yeah. Well, I'll take my my yeah. my normal spear down there. You've seen there's a spear video that I made on mm. on YouTube. It's black and white, mm. and that's mm. just over three meters long. Mm. That fits in the elevator diagonally. Mm. So that I take. That's the one I take downstairs. But my four meter plus ones, they stay in the living room, and I just push the furniture yeah. out the way, and then I do stuff in the living room with that. So. Yeah. Mm, wow. Nice. Actually, I was just uh, so just before this. So you know, I I mentioned um, Xu and Zhong. Yeah. Like my my teacher's original teacher. Mm-hmm. Um, I was actually just looking up. Maybe maybe I should uh, mention a bit about Xu and Zhong because he's probably like almost no one listening to this will. Sure. Go ahead. Is. Um. So like he he was uh, you know Shang like the big names in Shanghai back in the day were you know Lu Songga like the Xin Liu He. Lu Songgao and then Ji Jinshan mm-hmm. who's a Bagua guy, but like a slightly unusual branch of Bagua, I think. Okay. I'm, not, I'm not really sure which branch he did. Yeah. Um, and then so Xu Wen Zhong was was sort of one of that circle. Mm. It was like a An Hui guy who did Fanzi Fanzi and Shaolin originally, then learned Xin Liu He plus Xin Yi and Sun Style Tai Chi actually. Okay. And uh, yeah, so a whole range of stuff. I'm pretty sure not just like the Shaolin he learned was actually Tantui. Ah, right. Like, I mean, from, from what I've seen of the sets, like it's Northern Tantui. When you say um, Tantui, do you mean then, the standard Tantui that we've seen or the system Tantui? It, I, I, I'm not sure because the thing is that part of the system, no, no one in my group does. So I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, definitely they had some of the Tantui sets, but maybe not the whole system. Right, right. So, um, and I just before this call, I was actually looking at some uh, footage of him doing. So he had a set called Shi San Da Qiang, okay, which is like, which is considered like a jewel for for us uh, because it's it's great, it's great spear work. Like, right. obviously we have we have the Liu He, we have the Liu He Da Qiang, right, which is the standard Song Song family set, mm-hmm. um, and which should probably be the same. Like for Hebei branches, yeah, very um, But and so, like you know, but in our group, to know the Shishan Da Tiang as well is like okay, you are you are you are you're it. Ah, like you really got the spear down, right? And so, so I I know, I know Liu He Tiang, but I'm really I'm you know the next time I go back, I'm, I want to learn Shishan. Well, out of interest, I mean, so now that we're Shishan. on this on this topic, what are the the the, the spear content within your uh, system of Xingyi? What do you what is the kind of the, the, the process I mean that's so the thing do. is there, there, there's a lot of set like if you look at like song style in total like there's a lot of sets mm-hmm. right and I, I would I, I don't think it's necessary to learn all of the sets right. because some of them are, are just performance like uh, what we, like Hua Tiang right yeah. like which is performance spear um, so like the Hua Tiang set is Zuo Men Tiang uh-huh. right left left gate Le- yeah. uh, Tiang and then so but but actually for training for training Kung Fu like it's the it's the six harmony spear and then the the thirteen big spear. Ah, okay. Like those are the those those are the ones that are supposed to be done with the three to four meter big spear. And really, those are the only ones you need to do for your kung fu. Like I mean, Zuo Men Qiang, like my shifu knows it, but he doesn't. As far as I know, none none of our group practices it. Have learned the whole set ah. yeah, because because that one that one is a, is is definitely a performance set because there's a lot of like spinning the spear around. Oh, that's a, that's an immediate really... giveaway. I mean, that's an immediate yeah. giveaway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tianghua, Tianghua, right? Like you know, yeah. like that's definitely not for fighting. <laughs> no, no, for sure. But also, you can't really do that with very big spears. It's it's only... with a big spear. Yeah, exactly. It's definitely it's only meant for. I personally, my my suspicion is that that was actually like a a bian gan, like you know, the whip staff. Yeah, 
it was it was a whip staff set that was converted into a spear set. Yeah, well, that's the interesting about um, what we call like uh, yeah. wuhua, wuhua qiang or wuhua guan, that technique of mm. spinning. It's mm. a staff technique. It's the spinning. Yeah, it's a staff technique. It's a staff technique. It's not really suitable. It's not an original spear technique. Yeah, yeah. So the with the with the uh, syllabus, like so, there's a lot of sets. So there's a there's a spear. Uh, sorry, jian. So straight sword. There's a straight sword set called Zhan Dou Jian, okay. which was invented by Song Wu Chen, and that is kind of that's another little jewel that only a couple of branches still practice. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I really so Tianjin Tianjin branch practices that, and I really would like to see them because that's supposed to be quite a like a usable set, okay. very practical set. Okay. Um, then for staff, it would be Yin Shou Gun, which is a, is actually a two man set. I've learned that, and it's great. When, it's very short, actually. Yin, uh, yin Shou Gun is yeah. it Yin Yang the Yin, or which Yin is? No, it? no, right. So it's it's not because that's a that's a Shaolin set, right? right? right. Like a, it's uh, Huan Yin, Huan Yin. So ah. inviting. Oh, interesting. Inviting or meeting. Yeah. Yin Shou Gun. Yeah, okay, yeah. got it. It's a, it's a great little set. It's only like maybe ten movements, and it's like uh, one road there and one road back. Okay, nice. Like a, it's a two man set. Yeah, with like a it, that that one is really nice because you can take the individual techniques out and do so. It has all of these uh, you know you have to translate the Chinese technique names right. So it's um, lifting, stabbing, but with with the end of, tip of the the staff. Okay. Um, so tiao tiao gai chuo mm-hmm. like all of these like individual technique names, and you can. Then basically, just do what you want with those individual techniques, right? Got it, right, right. I mean, I, I, I me personally, I actually prefer sort of staff and spear to because I, I actually haven't learned the broadsword or straight sword sets. Ah, okay. Um, it, it was, it was, it was the stuff that I was supposed to learn before I left Shanghai, and unfortunately, you still got you time. Know, given the way things have been, you still got time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, next trip, next trip back, you know, it's it's top top of the priority list. Good. So, uh, but I mean, the the staff, it's really nice because you can just you can. Just with those seven or eight techniques, you can already start to just mess around, right? You know, with stuff from the two man set. Nice. And then obviously there's all the the empty hand stuff as well. So all the all the inherited, uh, Ji Xing Siba, Wu Xing Lian Hua, like uh, sorry, five five elements linking set, like the chicken the chicken set, right? Uh, you know all that stuff. Plus there's plus there's the the sets that that's, you know Song style or, or Song Song Shirong or one of the the sort of Song family invented, right? Um, yeah, but it's interesting so, that I mean, you say honestly, Shishan Chiang is a, about, is a special a special. Yeah, sorry. It's interesting. That, oh, well, so the, the yeah. that's the Shu and Zhong stuff. Yeah. Okay. Right? So I mean, that's so the Shanghai group. Like we we keep some of that stuff because oh, sorry, I mean we my my Shifu, he keeps that stuff because he, you know, it's incredible for Zhang Gong Fu building right. Gong Fu. Right. 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 So not just the the so the things that he's retained from Shu and Zhong. Um, is the Shishan Qiang, and also in, at the end of his life, Xu and Zhong combined his Xin Liu He into his Fanzi, which is hmm. very unusual. That is interesting. Um, and so he he combined it into a set that he called like a sh- like Ten Roads Zhong Zhong He Quan, uh-huh. like sort of synthesized set. Yeah, and that is like in, in our in our group, it's considered like you know you have you have to be on Shifu's good side to even like get one or two roads. Ah. <laughs> Like, uh, so, I mean, I, 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 I've, I, I know a couple of roads, but I don't think anyone knows the whole set okay. from, from our Shifu. But I mean, it's great stuff, really good stuff because it's, uh, it, it looks quite different to like the, the standard Fanzi mm. because there's so much Xin Liu He in it. Nice. Right. So, so it's got a lot of all of the like, uh, uh tiger seizing, ah. the, uh, tai, uh, Hu Bao Tou, mm-hmm. like all of those very, uh, typical, Xin Liu He or Xin Yi don't movements. They're inside the mm-hmm. the combined set. Very interesting. Yeah, and I mean me per, me personally when I like because I you know I I sort of split everything apart and just use everything. Com, you know, you're supposed to come up with your own combinations, mm, right? Exactly. So you know when I when I do my sort of free style practice, like you know a lot of that stuff helps. I mean, it's great. Yeah. Like, because because you know, what's the uh, uh, cat washes his face, right? So yeah. Mao Xilin. Mao Xilin. Yeah. So like all, all of these like hand methods combined with the the five elements uh, fists is just, I mean, it's it's a fighting system by itself. Totally. Well, I, like you wouldn't need any you wouldn't need any of the other stuff. You know, I've I've kind of um, had this you know in, in in passing conversation with people, but you know, a lot of the time people think that the term sanda sanda 
and Sancho, mm. you know, mm. they think it simply refers to mm. the, the combat mm. format, right? Now, the name Sanda, we mm. can say, sure, it means, you know, mm. fighting, and it also refers... The sport, yeah, current, the current sport. The current yeah. format, but the term no. Sancho, mm. the Sancho, you know, people often translate as, oh, it just means free fighting, but that's not classically all it meant, right? Like the term San, mm. Sankai, or to separate something, you know, to was mm. a process of taking it, take, techniques that were combined in in containers like routines and separating them mm. and 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 working on them in terms of different uses different changes single techniques. Techniques. exactly so yeah. sancho means to take those methods and to separate them and develop them and and that's what you're talking about here as well you know um yeah yeah, yeah. i mean there's there's different terms for it like uh the chai chai jia, exactly right exactly or dan chao. Exactly. like it's all talking about the same thing split everything in the forms out into single techniques and and then train the, the crap out exactly exactly <laughs> right so, yeah you know you 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 yeah. your your, I mean, there's a, your spear uh, content is interesting because in my system like in my, my my lineage we do of course we do the five elements first so we'll do the individual five elements first then you've got mm. uh xing lian huan qiang mm. right which is five elements linking mm. but then mm. we've got uh ba shi mm. ba shi qiang which is a routine as well eight eight oh. eight and then you learn shi san shi qiang so we have Shu San Shu Qiang in there as well. Um, oh, okay. So at least at least three big spear sets. Right, and then we've got Li like Li Hua Qiang, which is pear blossom spear, and we've got Liu He Qiang. So there's quite a lot of Wait, spear. Wait, is that all from? I mean, how did? Because the thing with weapons in Xing Yi generally, like I, I feel like a lot of the sets, like certainly in 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 the Song Style case as well, mm. like a lot of the sets actually came in from like regional spear sets that then came into the system yeah of course same with the the broadsword or the spear right so i saw all the straight sword sorry so like where did the li hua yeah that came the, what was the what was the last one you said liu he liu he is the last so liu he okay, okay. Li hua, that's probably an original yeah set. that like is like i mean a li hua, li hua came from yeah. an external source i'm not sure where but i know it came from a, another source uh, along the way um and our our the one my teacher actually had has got it's got 19 roads that's how long the damn thing is. Wow. But a lot of the roads are that thing I mean, where you like crazy. do, um, you know, Lu Chang, where you, you tuck the... It repeats. Yeah, well, you tuck, you mm. get to the end of a, mm. a line and you tuck the spear in and walk away. Back. You, you tuck, tuck the spear. Bai shi. Exactly. Bai shi. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, do we, we, do we, I, I had a problem when I was learning that because, uh, like, I don't know if you guys do the same thing, but on the, what do you call it? Lu, Lu Chang. Yeah, well, that's the basic idea of what the technique right. is, is Lu. Yeah. Right. You, you you walk back with right you walk back sorry yeah. with with the chang uh, with the spear tucked under your you and, and I I got told off a million times for not kicking up my feet right coming back right kicking them behind you so so apparently right kicking behind you because I when I first learned it I was like this is stupid uh. and I wouldn't do it and then my shift was like no it's an integral part of the set right do it right. Yeah, we, we have that same method, but you know, the, what people don't realize is, and this is what comes back to that Wu um, Hua, that rotating spear technique that is obviously from mm. staff. The key point about a spear mm. is keeping the tip pointing at your opponent. That's the key point. Right. The tip is always still, even even when you're retreating. Even when you're retreating. Right. And that's part of what that technique is doing mm. right there. It's like, you can retreat, but mm. you've got the spear pointing at the guy, you know, so... The mm. A, he's going to be hesitant to come charging in, and B, you've got options to immediately deal with something. It's already immediately there. Immediately, like, yeah, deal, block, block him or stab, stab back. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's, it's, I mean, it's really nice. Like, these, set, the, these sets, like, they, they're gold. Yeah. Like, you know, they, they are, they've got to be kept. Like, I mean, for performance ones, I'm I'm sort of, you know, it's 50 50 yeah, yeah. whether to learn them at all. But, but like for the Kung Fu and all this stuff, because this is, you know, it's the core of the art. It's the root of the art. Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah, that, um, the spear is extensive. You you mentioned also something mm. about um, like your 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 system has that combined fanza um, with, with, which is great. I mean, that's the teacher's personal experience and his Kung Fu that he's trying to hand down. Mm. Um well, I mean, because he's like, a, just just to give you more background on him, like he only went to the Song family quite late, okay. like when he was in his thirties or yeah, late thirties. Okay. Because like prior to that, you know, for the for the twenty years before that, he was doing uh, Xu and Zhong's material, mm -hmm. which was which was Xin Liu Xin plus the fans of the plus um, Shui Jiao actually. Okay. So like, so he so he brought all of that into his 
So, I mean, he doesn't teach it separately now, mm. but when he uses his art, then you see, <laughs> you know, he still keeps a lot of that um, uh, power and uh, techniques. Right. That's interesting. Mm. Where does his fans come from? I've learned a couple know? of things. The the fans are, oh you mean you mean Xu Wenzhong's yes, fans? Yes. Uh, well, I mean he's he's from so Xu Wenzhong was from Anhui and then he moved to Shanghai. So I and I know he must have learnt it before he came to Shanghai. So uh, I I can probably dig up the name of the teacher, but it's definitely Anhui fans. Okay, interesting. Like I I don't know I don't know the lineage right. or whatever, but it it does look. I've I've tried to look. Uh, you know, at like uh, Ba Fan Quan and things like mm. that. But it, the the routine, even without the Xin Liu He, it still looks quite different. Right. So I I don't really know. I mean, it's a bit of a mystery, but it's it's great stuff. Yeah. Have you looked at can, or yeah, seen yeah. any of Wu Binlo's handed down Chuo Jiao and Fanzi? I the Chuo Jiao Fanzi, I've only seen the Chuo Jiao sets. Uh, I don't think I've seen the Fanzi okay, sets. Okay. Okay. So I'm not really familiar with what that looks like. Yeah, I'll try find some video. I mean, that's also really good stuff. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, my teacher learned with Wu Binlo to to add to his existing Xingyi content because of the footwork of, of mm. Chuo Jiao. Footwork. The footwork. Yeah. Yeah. So he learned a lot of the Chuo Jiao sets mm. and a couple of the Fanzi sets, but he mm. didn't focus on much else in the in the system because. He was a mm. Xingyi guy, so because from the Xingyi you already have the 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 da. Yeah, exactly. Right? You, you have such strong da, then you don't need the fans. The the fans. Are, I mean, not not much of it. Well, you know, but but the does your does your teacher still do the Chuo Jiao sets? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he he still does them, and he teaches them to to people that that are interested in learning, like you know, the basis. I never learned them because I came from a long fist background, so. I didn't want to learn, yes. you know, Chuo Jiao and Fanzi yeah. from him. I had done. If you have a really strong kicking base from the the long fist, yeah. then you know you don't need it. Exactly. So he, you know, I remember him telling me that when he was younger, and he would um, he would go off to parks to bump into other martial artists, and what what happened to him was he was yeah. he was testing himself out with somebody who who these kicks came up from nowhere underneath everything, and he got kicked a few times, and then he went back to his teacher, and he's like. I think I should learn some George Yao. <laughs> and it's oh, these sort of hidden kicks. Okay, do you know what? Do you know what's really interesting mm. about that is? So you know, uh, I'm friends with Will. Who's yeah. Like Mantis. Yeah. Uh, I I don't want to get the branch wrong. Taiji Meihua Mantis. Yeah, yeah. I think Meihua Meihua Taiji. Yeah. Uh, and so he he showed me one time that I think they call it uh, Jade, like Yu Huan Bu. Yu Huan Bu. Right. Yeah. So Jade Circle Step. Right. right. And uh, and it it it's really. It really is one of those hidden kicks where, like, the guy adjusts his footwork and then just hits you with a kick from like, yeah, sort of arm arms distance. Exactly. Uh, and because because you think he's just changing weight, you don't expect the kick. Right. Like it's not like a, a typical um, what would you call that? Like a roundhouse. Yeah. Uh, roundhouse kick, which you would find in like Muay Thai or, or a push or kick or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's not like any of those. Like it's it's an odd kick, and it just comes out of nowhere and hits yeah. you in the groin, and you're like, oh fuck. Yeah, or the so. shin, which is just as painful, you know. So. Yeah, it's like the, the amount of skin that's come off the shins, right? <laughs> yeah, but you know, you know that that yeah, um, kicking techniques. Uh, uh, Liao Tui, you know that that very famous kick in 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 Georgia where they kick up behind them, you know. It's like I call it the donkey kick, right? Basically, I, I never knew the proper name for that. But you know, people people kind of misunderstand that. You know, they think it's all about that backwards kicking. But a lot of the time, they're forgetting that the the re prerequisite when you're training it is that when it comes down, your toes have to smash into the floor. Okay, so apart from training the technique and the aspects of a backwards kind of kick for application, as well as the you know the flexibility and the dynamic training that you're doing there. That foot coming back down and smashing into the floor with the, with a, like the ball of your foot, that's conditioning. That's conditioning for those front kicks where you're smashing into the guys. Oh, wow, I never noticed that before. And that's so what that that's a that's targeting like the the guys like stamping on the guy's foot. Well, in in the sense of the training, it could, but it's more along the lines of focused training to get your foot to be able to. Uh, issue force hard and condition it and then when you're doing the normal front right. kicks like those low front kicks that aim for the shin that's the part of the foot that you mm -hmm. use you use that that ball of the foot to smash into the the shins and now you've 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 been training it so effectively with that downward smashing it into the ground that when you're kicking up you know mm. it's a it's there's a, there's your feet are quite quite 
accustomed to not only receiving that force but issuing it mm-hmm. very hard so that's part of the training with that one movement so when you see i mean it, it is very different like you know if if someone's coming from you know like like me before i moved to china mm-hmm. right like if someone's coming from like a sport what, what's commonly available in the west yeah. like you know uh, Taekwondo or Muay Thai or whatever, like the, the kicking approach for traditional Chinese martial arts is very different. Right. Right. Yeah, it's, you know, like it's a lot of a lot of stamping, a lot of targeting the knee joint. Yeah. Like a lot of a lot of a lot of. I mean, you know, the first like Guadi Fong, right? Yeah. Which I, you guys yeah. probably still have as yeah. well. So that that Xin Liu Ke style, just I mean, it's just targeted at the shin. It's right? the shins, yeah, for sure. Like, yeah, I mean, just just aiming to cause like huge pain or possibly breakage, exactly. like from the the first, and which which makes it very difficult to practice in a friendly manner. No, totally. Let's be honest. There's no there's no real safe way to fully train it without possibly causing an injury, and that's part of the. the I mean, even even yeah. even with half power, you're taking the guys. I mean, you know, I I I've had you know skin taken off by my shovel, and you yeah. know, I have a, one guy I train with here in Hong Kong where the, you know, he's like you just you took the skin off my shin and it's taken me like three weeks to, to grow back. So he's not, not willing to practice. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, not, it's very hard to practice, you know, regularly. Totally. Totally. So, I mean, the, part of like my teacher was, you know, because I'd watch him teach and we'd talk a lot of about his, uh, about the chuoja that he learned. And like one of the key things is like when the fist is coming out or the hand is extending, the foot underneath is also coming off. It's like there's there's almost no yeah, there's almost no ji, no time that the hand goes out alone. The foot is underneath ji, there. Ji shang da xia. Exactly. Ji shang da xia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I remember asking my shiver one time about it. It's just a warm up. Uh, what's the actual long pu xiang jiao? Yeah. Right. So it's just a punch. It's punch and a kick together. It's nothing yeah. complex. Yeah. But I was like, shiver, why do we practice this long pu xiang jiao? Mm. Like, why do we practice this uh, punch and a kick together? And he's like. You know the 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 concept in in traditional Chinese martial arts is you always have the option to kick at exactly the same time you're punching. Exactly right. So the one right? the one so distracts with the your punch other yeah. as he's getting kicked. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, one of them is going to hit him. Right, right. I mean, it's in there in Zasha Chui. It's in there in our Basha as well, directly in that sense. And it in fact has an aspect like if you look at the combination specifically for us, we use hung to cross into the guy's guard. So you use hung to to bridge onto his front arm with the one hand, and while you've right. once you've yeah, while yeah. you've got that pressure, you launch the punch over it. So he's now got his one arm already out of out of out of action. He's not going to be able to out of action, and he's got yeah. to use the other hand now to deal with the punch. But at the same time, the kick is coming in underneath. So that's how it's used in yeah. that sense. So. I mean, you know, the, it's, that's the thing about Xin Yi. Like you're overwhelming the guy's defenses. Yeah. You know, so yeah, you know, he's he he has no option really. He's gonna get hit one way or the other. <laughs> yeah, one way or the other. Yeah, like I mean, that's part of the mentality. I mean, I I you know I loved what Raphael said about like you know did 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 I choose Singy or did Singy choose me? I mean, the this the Singy mentality can give you problems in normal modern life. Oh, tell me about it. <laughs> I know I know all too well. But yeah. <laughs> You know, if if I mean, if you're training it a lot, it it actually does do, and it's 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 bad for, you know, I I I'm sure you've had the same thing where you visualize hitting people in the street. <laughs> uh, I, does that sound weird? No, it doesn't. I know exactly what you're talking about. Like I'll I'll be I'll be look I'll be looking at like a little granny going like that'd be a great shoulder budget. <laughs> Like the Dian Carl, it's it's really wrong, right? <laughs> well, the grannies. It depends on what what you're doing. If you're in a line with them, no, 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 if, not necessarily. If, right. if you're in a line, a bigger with, guy would be a better choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah. like like Raphael said, you know, did Xinyi choose me or did I choose it? I remember say, mm. seeing my teacher over the years and, and then over the years he'd say, oh, well, our personalities are very similar. Our personalities are very similar, you know, and I'd be like. Did I develop this mm. personality because I'm with my teacher or am I with my teacher because we had a likeness of personality? You know, who knows, you know? Yeah, it's, it's chicken and egg. Yeah. Right? Like, you know, at, at the end of the day, like, it's just, it, it happens so, like, where there is that very good, like, relationship with the shifu, it's because, you know, there is a certain part of your personality that is very simple. Totally. Right. Totally. And he's going to foster it and grow it. And it's going to develop from there too. Yeah, and then yeah, the yeah. style has a lot to do with it because I mean, the style is a 
both in the way that we meant no no nonsense yeah, no bs direct and not scared to directly express things and then that kind of you know that mm. seeps out into daily life which you know in some ways caused problems mm. and you know my teacher used to tell me at times well i mean yeah I I'm in corporate life, so it's definitely not. <laughs> Xing Xing Yi is like the worst for uh, uh, the, the corporate uh, business life. Try working with government <laughs> officials and having that attitude. Oh God! <laughs> yeah, I, I don't. I don't envy you, man. Like, I mean, it's it must be the amount of sort of double talk. Oh, and, uh, I'm glad I'm out of that. Yeah. I mean, I mentioned this to you before. I I just yeah. couldn't. I can't keep up with that because you have to. And you know, at times mm -hmm. I got a lot of trouble because of my. You know, I I'm, I don't I don't want to talk shit. I don't want to, I don't want to, mm. I don't want to entertain nonsense either. So I'm very direct in what, mm. Mm. you know, so it caused trouble over the time. I remember my teacher hearing I, problems that I would have laughing saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's right. Hey, is it like, but very long, you know, but he's, <laughs> he's like, you're too, you're too straightforward. You can't be so straightforward in that environment, but, but he would say in that environment. Yeah. But, but he said, I, he loves it. Yeah. I would do the same thing basically is what he's saying. You know? <laughs> Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, you know, all, all all sort of official official organizations are the same in that way. Right, right. you have to be very, very uh, well, like I said, cut off exactly. right? like the double talk and the 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 fa facade and everything. Right. I think I think Japanese people are much better than that because it's it's you know much more a part of their culture. Right, where you know you you put on, you put on a uh, you put on a mask totally. Right? Basically, I don't know if that's good for you though in the long term. No, long, long term, long term, I couldn't do it. No, well, right? like I think even yeah, even it's, for it's, people, it's yeah, even for people within that culture, I think the longer you suppress something that naturally wants to come out in that sense, when it's an, an unnatural suppression, it comes out in weird ways. Mm. You know, not always, but well, it has I the mean, potential I, to. I, 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 so I at university, I actually roomed with Japanese people, um, Japanese girls okay. actually, and. Um, uh, uh, <laughs> that's interesting how did that happen experience. <laughs> great great experience great experience Byron. i recommend it to everyone um and so like it does come out in odd ways like all of them like to to like a greater or lesser extent like they had this like hidden violence yeah like uh and so like one of them would go to karaoke and like you know she was the typical you know sweet all sweetness and light and kawaii and all this kind yeah. of stuff and then she would like go to karaoke and she would only sing like new metal, like, oh my metal God. songs. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> and that, yeah, that wasn't the half of it. So yeah, it, does, it definitely does. Doing that long term, it definitely does come out in other yeah. ways. And it's probably not healthy. For you. Yeah, we've seen that. We've seen that. I mean, you, you look at a lot of the um, massive polarized contradictions that exist. If you look at Japan in any case with this ancient upright, mm you know, moral culture with this is yes, and that is taboo. Mm. And then you go to the vending machines, mm. or you go to, mm. you know, the, um, the red light district in Tokyo, and you're like, what the hell, this is the complete opposite, yeah. you know? Yeah, what, what goes, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's not, it's not really hidden, right? Like, all no. you have to do is go to Kabuki Cho yeah, on a Friday night. Exactly, night. I was, I, I didn't want to say it. But yeah, Kabuki Cho <laughs> on a Friday night, I walked through there, like, what the hell is this? You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i've never been there byron i don't know what you're talking about. oh really okay <laughs> well like you're just just walk past just walk past uh, at lunchtime no no yeah. i just walked through that's that's it that's that's what happened there yeah yeah just to, yeah, as, as a tourist it's just you know like whoa this this does not exist in beijing no anymore, right? no totally <laughs> yeah but it's interesting mm. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, off, off topic uh, but but actually one relevant one relevant point about that is like i've actually met um, so in Japan, it's much more normal for like women mm. to do martial arts, yeah. right? So you know, you meet you meet women who are really good karate or judo, you know, and and Kendo. it's it's great. It's really, I mean, you know, if I, you know, I'm I'm recently married guy. If if I have a daughter, I would love or a son or a daughter, I would love if they did any of those. Right, right, right. You know, it's just it's just good. I think it's just good generally to have that self-defense knowledge just because so you know you take no nonsense right when you grow up do they offer it in schools there in hong kong yes. at all i mean as an extracurricular activity hong kong, hong kong is an is an odd place like what's popular here is so for adults it's the muay thai mm. and then for kids the the really weird thing for me is that so what's popular is archery archery is very common and available olympic archery um and 
I, I don't know. I haven't really. I mean, yeah, I, I assume it's it's the modern. What is it? Compound bow okay. archery. Yeah. Um, and and then karate, like that's very popular for little kids here. Interesting karate. So, yeah. Well, that's a good yeah. thing. I mean, I remember that my first uh, like I my my first like grade one primary school that I went to. That's where I started doing judo because it was available at the school as an extracurricular activity. And I think it's really good for kids to have that at the school as an extracurricular activity, whatever it is. Judo is great. I mean, and there's there's so much crossover between rest, like all stand up wrestling styles, right? Yeah. Which you know I think is so like if you get that base from judo then even if later on you study something else like it's so applicable right well i I've, it was interesting because i did judo for a few years when i was a kid and then i, I moved on to other stuff i did karate and then i did other things but that feeling of mm. i don't know if you know what the osotogari is do you know what it is it's a the osotogari, yeah, yeah, yeah like the sweeping throw. yeah like that like, that, yeah. that that big big sweeping big reaping sweep right mm. I used to love that technique mm. when I was growing up and that feeling that I, I remember when I was a kid and how I used to do it. I mean, the second I, mm. I put on a gi again and started, you know, pulling people that came back immediately, you know, it's like something that was t wow. 25 years on. It was still there. You know, it's, it's interesting. That's amazing. Like, so there was a 20, like 20 plus year gap and you still came back just like that. Well, it, I, like after one or two sessions, I was like, boom, oh, there's that feeling again. I was like, oh shit. You found the feeling. Yeah, it was very interesting. Yeah. And I, I remember as a kid actually enjoying baiting people into trying to do it to me because then I'd reverse it on them. And I, I had a whole little setup. Uh, reverse throw. Yeah. Reverse throw. And that came back immediately yeah, nice. too. And I was like, okay, so it is kind of those, those things that you do at that yeah. age kind of do stick with you forever, you know, mm. so... It was interesting. Hey, I mean, even at that age, you were learning. You were learning about breaking the balance, breaking the root. Exactly, right? exactly. So it was interesting. Mm. Like, I mean, that's that's the one thing. Like, so so I learned. Um, so a very long time ago, I did a bit of what in the UK it's called practical tai chi. Okay. Um, it's it's actually a, a variant of woo woo like uh, called called you know, Is that it's, is it's that Doherty's style tai chi. Doherty's stuff? Yeah, it's it's Dan Doherty. Okay. Dan Doherty. So so for for them, they teach. Uh, I mean. You have to check with them how they teach it now. But um, so the brush knee twist step mm -hmm. in Tai Chi, they teach it as basically a, a, a yeah, Lo Xiao Bu. They they teach it as a reaping throw. One one of the applications. Okay. So so I still I still do that. Like it's probably one of the only techniques I still practice and remember from Interesting. that. Interesting. Uh, because because it's it's a great throw, just regardless of what you call it or which system you learned it from. Right. How were you yeah, reaping? And, uh, how were you reaping yeah. when you guys did it? Were you well, so for them, for them, uh, if I remember correctly, so the the, you know, to to a straight punch or whatever, mm -hmm. hand to control straight punch. Um, the other hand is push, uh, pressing up against the chin to control the neck control. Yeah, and then you do the reap. And the reap is with an outside, yeah. with the outside leg. That's okay. Okay, makes sense. Yeah, then then it perfectly fits into the mm. the, the motion of the technique. Yeah, yeah. Also the gari. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, also yeah. the gari, we mm, usually so. use the the inside leg, and you step past the guy mm. as you as you do it. But it could work the same way. It could work exactly the same way. It's just use the other leg. Yeah, I mean, with with throwing, like once you once you see the principle of of you know the the reap. Yeah. Like you can do it whichever way, right? And then then you know, like you found out when you were a kid, you know, you do. I mean, I only got into this stuff much much like i was 30 in my mid 30s by the mm. time you know i started i found my my you know final teacher um and yeah once you once you sort of get the principle of that you can you can change up the throws right and do and and start getting into the counter throws yeah. which i i love yeah you know that that feeling where where the person where the person thinks they've got you and you reverse it mid throw exactly i mean i i can only i can't do it that often but it's a fantastic feeling when you can do well there was a kid from hong kong actually that used to train with with me at my at my jujitsu for a couple of years he was stationed in beijing for work he's now stationed in nanjing All right. young guy and he started like uh training maybe you know, jujitsu he started training maybe two or three years after me but but he was a, a very hard working mm. i, I like the, the kid a lot and um, and um i remember after like I don't know, a couple of years and uh, I w we would do some stand up and I used to bait, you know, I'd, I'd stick my leg in the middle deliberately in a position, uh, you know, <laughs> give it to give him, it to him yeah. thinking and he would think, oh, great, here's a take. Some game, yeah, yeah. And then I would just like wrap and yeah. twist and reverse the whole thing. And I remember the one day doing it to him and in the middle as I put my leg there and he went for it with his leg and I just looked at him as I threw him. I said, that's a trap. 
you know, from like Star Wars, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and he landed, he landed after, I, 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 well, you know, I took him down, threw him with it. And he looked up to me, he started yeah. swearing at me in Cantonese. It was actually hilarious. But anyway, yeah, good times. Yeah, like a fight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I missed that kid. Well, yeah, well he, he, won't, he won't fall for that one again. Hopefully. Well, he did. He did three or four times in the same night. But I think he kind of got wiser after that, so so it's all good yeah i mean it's it's all game. it's all games like it, you know it's it's like I, I don't know if you've watched any of those videos, or you see you probably see them because you're in beijing mm. like you know the old the old shui jiao guys who turn up to the park yeah the yeah yeah i've seen it like in tianjin in tianjin and beijing especially right. like you know these guys have been doing shui jiao for like 30 40 yep. years if not more yeah. and uh you know they they have all the tricks in the book they're not necessarily as athletic as they were when they were yeah, younger but you've got to watch out no of course they know those old men are hard, man. A lot of them are very hard. You go to the park here, you, you look at them, yeah. you underestimate them. They're hard old men, you know? So, yeah. yeah. I, I, I respect that so much. Like, you know, these guys who, there's there's no money in it. No. There's no, you know, there's not much recognition for it, but they have trained their entire life in most cases. And they, they've kept it up even into their 60s, their 70s. I have so much respect. Well, isn't that just what lifestyle, you know, lifestyle I, I martial I can, arts is about? You know what, I... I it, it is, but it's so opposite to the current yeah. mi- sort of mindset. Yeah. I mean, you know, you know, we're, we're both from, you know, Western countries. Like, that, that's not the mindset these no. days. The mindset is I, I turn up, I pay my money, you know, I practice for an hour and then I go home. Exactly. And, you know, I, I st- if, if I sort of lose interest in it, then that's it. You know, right. maybe maybe two years later, I don't even remember what I learned. Right, exactly, exactly. Which is which is totally the opposite of you know you 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 studied with you know a very traditional mm. teacher in in a lot of ways, right? And you know the these guys, you know they got up at well you know silly o'clock in the morning. Yeah. They're already practicing, you know, and by by the time like seven a.m. comes around, they're gone. They're done. They're going to work, you know, and. Yeah, they go, I mean, okay, before, I mean, my teacher is relatively lenient, like, you know, he's, he's, his training sessions are later in the morning, mm. but like, they were, before I started with my teacher, there was another teacher in Shanghai, Wang Sunlin, who does very nice Hebei Xin mm. Um and he, you had to, you had to turn up at six, and six was already considered late for him, like, his personal training was, like, starting at five, right. you know, and, and uh, these all these teachers they had full-time day jobs yeah you know it's not like they were la- lazing around during the day they made the time in the mo- in the very early morning and the evenings to train spear to train the basics to tra- and you know you looking at them you know all of us are just just hobbyists and you know the other funny thing and you mentioned this about the mentality and how it's actually part of their life and what it means to them like people like my teacher and others that i that i've met over the years they they were poor they weren't they weren't like rich they their jobs were a lot of the times hard heavy work Mm -hmm. you know it wasn't the best the best Mm -hmm. job and there was no excuse they were at training before that in the dark and then after that at night too it was just how it is you know they go work in a factory you know Mm -hmm. I, I'm sure you know what yeah. Feng Zhichang's background was. Well, I mean, Feng, Zhich, Feng Zhichang as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, exactly. That that story, the famous story of Feng Zhichang yeah. where didn't he save one of his uh, colleagues from, from like a heavy machine? Something, something like that. Yeah, yeah. S- something like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, all of these, uh, you know, all of the, that older generation, I mean, now, now they're passing mm. on and have passed on. Um, that older generation of teachers, I mean, you know, Wang Peisheng was sent down to Yunnan for what, 15 yeah. years? yeah exactly like you know it's like they they got through such hardships in their life and came through still remembering everything and still practicing everything i mean right we we have we have when when we know about the stories of the previous generation like you know i i feel pretty embarrassed right (laughs) you know about the amount of time i put in i mean i try and put in you know at least an hour every day but it's not really that much considering what they would try and they would cycle like yeah halfway across the city on a bicycle in winter to get mm. to the training and then cycle yeah. back mm. in time for work and then cy- you know this is like like how, how i mean beijing is a huge city even back then yeah i mean especially now especially but even back then because no cars yeah right yeah yeah well i mean even the idea of the public transportation and the the, the you know more cars today it's that's even a very recent thing i remember mm. When I started coming here in like 2001, 2002, most people were still running around on bicycles. Mm. That was how people got around. Mm. Well, I mean, I, I, I've talked to, uh, about on this topic with Will as well. Like, because the older generation, they wanted it. Mm. They wanted it badly. Mm. 
right? And they made they made those. They were willing to to you know make those daily sort of sacrifices to get it right. to get the skill. Right. Um, and it, it really makes me understand sort of the mentality of the Shifu's mm. generation because you know they see people just coming, and you know I'm sure you've experienced it. I I have several friends who've recently started teaching who've experienced it. You know people come. Uh, people come, you know, like a pick and choose. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to the supermarket mentality. No, totally. Right? You know, it's totally. like so today. Today, today, I'd like to learn. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't get uh, me started on that. You, you, your, your, your Santi is still terrible. What are you talking about? Don't get me started on that. The the <laughs> amount of guys that have come, like, uh, they, uh, I'm not going to name names, but there was a, a some people that came from overseas and had contacted. Uh, they don't speak Chinese, so they had to contact me to come arrange for them to train with my teacher. And they'd come and they'd come with a like a grocery list. I'd like to learn this, 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 this. And I looked at them and I'm like, you oh. will learn exactly what he wants to teach you when you're ready to learn it. You're just going to sit there and train. Mm. What do you think this is? Like Pizza Hut? Mm. You think this is Pizza Hut? Would you like extra cheese with that? I mean, what what kind of a mentality yeah, I mean, is that? The, 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 the thing is, you know, no, but the, I mean, we, we have to live in the modern world, mm. right? Like, and the, the thing is, if we want the arts... You know, I, I, I very, you know, I'm sure you have the same feeling as me. You know, this is this, this stuff is gold, yeah. right? This stuff is stuff that you can practice for your a lot, your lifetime. Mm. And every, you know, every every year there's new things that you find about it. So we we do want to pass it to the next generation. And you know, there there are going to have to be changes in in teaching. Not I'm not talking about content. Right. It, we shouldn't we shouldn't change the content. But you know, there has to be some kind of compromise. In the middle, yeah. where where pe- people can learn what they feel that they've come here to learn or whatever, and at the same time they need to train the things that actually build gong fu. <laughs> well, you know, I think so. It's like a compromise. I think the compromise, in our sense, particularly coming from the mentality of Western, like organized, you know, X, Y, and Z, where we've got a different approach to how things mm. are. I think the compromise is only in mm. structuring the system. It should just be more clearly structured. Yes. I don't think people, mm. I don't think the attitude and the method that people learn it should change in, in the sense that I mm. don't agree with somebody coming along saying, no, well, I want to learn this set. And you're like, okay, no, you'll learn it in line with yeah, the yeah. system. No, I mean, look, even, yeah, e- even in like a Western, like even in a Western dojo, right? Like, you know, there is a curriculum, there is a syllabus. And like, so for Dan Doherty's uh, Tai Chi, like, you know, if you came along and you said, I want to learn the twin. So his, his jewel is the 24 Nei Gong set. Okay. Right, which is, uh, you know, because because that uh, they're very upfront about that. That that gives you the ability to take blows, okay, like very heavy blows to to the upper body with no problem, mm. um, and is basically sort of supercharging their tai chi. Okay. Um, so if you came to him and you said, "Oh, I want to learn the twenty four Gong straight off," no way. Okay. You know, and that's that's a guy who's in the West for you know thirty years. Yeah. So. You know, I, I think I think what you say is right. Like, you know, the syllabus is the syllabus. Like, you can't just jump to, you know, level ten and you haven't even got the level one basics. Right, thing. right. Well, that's that, that. Like I was saying, these people that came through, and I remember uh, a couple of them learning circle walking. They had just started, you know, and they'd come through for like mm-hmm. like uh, fifteen days, or that was the plan, or something. Which you know, I know, I I, I get it. I understand. Westerners think that that's really short. I know they think yeah, it's a long really time. Short. They think if they've gone to China for two weeks or a month and they've trained every day, that like wow, that's a whole lot of stuff. But that's I you know I hate to break it to everybody, but that's just every day of the year for us. You know what I mean? So. In that sense, I do appreciate I mean, the sacrifice. <laughs> really, what they need is fifteen days of circle walking. Well, that's exactly <laughs> that's it. it. I mean, I rem- <laughs> That's exactly the point. You got to and and after like three or four days of circle walking, the the guy came up to me. He was like, "Hey, when are we gonna learn Bagua?" I'm like, "What are you talking about?" It's like, well, "Yeah, we've been walking around for like the last four days, and when are we gonna actually start learning Bagua?" I said, "This is the base of Bagua. You've got to walk properly first, right? You know, I mean." You, yeah, if you don't have that, then you, there's no point pricing the other Exactly. Side. And then he, he, he turned around and looked at me and said, yeah, but, you know, I, I, I don't have much time and I'd like to learn some Bagua before I leave. And I just looked at him. I said, if you don't trust the teacher, that's already we're done. You know, you've got to trust the teacher that you're you're learning with. And he'll teach you when you need to learn it, when you're ready to learn. You'll move on, mm. you know. And sure enough, like two or three days later, my teacher started showing them a few other you know, fundamental basics, you know. But the issue, mm. the issue with the mentality is like, first, 
they've come with this idea that it's like a, I kind of I kind of a lot of Westerners do this. They they come with this mentality that they're coming here to get stock. Shopping mentality. Yeah, they're getting stock. It's not even just mm. shopping for your personal home. It's like they're getting stock to stock mm. their shop, and then they want to go back and teach it. You know what I mean? And mm. and and I found this out about yeah a few yeah no uh, I mean not not so not so much in Shing either yeah. not so much in Shing but like I I know of other arts like uh, which I've talked about with mm. Will, um, where people are forms collectors yeah. right like, like I know. I know, I know, sixty forms. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> uh, but you know, can you fight? Right. <laughs> and the answer is often no. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Or, or not very well. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, it's a very strange thing, and 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 the whole idea with, you mm. know, I've always found it strange. And again, I don't want to be judgmental, and maybe it is slightly judgmental, but I never started martial arts with the idea of I'm going to open a school. But I have met people like that, like their first initial inkling about why they want to study. Is because their plan is to teach people and and get into it. I'm like, you know, yeah. all of that stuff can come yeah. if and when it comes, but you should be doing the martial art because you genuinely want to learn and develop it for yourself. You know, and I find it very strange. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I I don't I don't want to be controversial, but I mean that is it is a mentality and it's very common in the West, mm. right? Like, uh, you know, uh, and it's so opposite to you know the the. The traditional Chinese mentality, because I know I'm sure you have the same thing. Where I know tons of Shishong or, or or kung fu uncles mm. or whatever who have been practicing for 35 years or 40 years and are really really good, and they wouldn't even dream of opening the yeah, school. Exactly, they're not learning it to to teach someone else. They're perfect. I mean, and that's kind of the reason why you don't see, you know, when I when I go to Shanxi, like I see tons of good, really nice, really nice students. Mm. Right, where you know all the shenfa is good, all the power is good, the structure is good, like and and you're like, but you've never heard of these people. You've never even they've never even posted a video exactly. because they're practicing for themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and that's I think that is the huge difference. Like a lot of a lot of people, you know, probably because of you know the the McDojo mindset mm -hmm. from the last 30, 40 years. Like they come over and they're like, okay, well I want to open a dojo myself within you know four or five mm. years. It's like it's not what it's about, man. Yeah, exactly. Like it's, it's a mindset change. Yeah, it's. I, I don't. Again, I don't want to be overtly judgmental about people because I, you know, as as you go get older, you kind of realize that you know people are more complicated than we pretend they are. So, but I I do think that mm. there is a slight difference in perspective with that point that you've just mentioned in the in, mm. in the east and the west for sure. Mm. So. You know, I, yeah. I am. No, it, it does. It does change yeah. you. It changes your mindset. I am glad, though, that mm. more and more of the legitimate practices and practitioners are being more exposed in the West, which I think slowly is changing the the mentality, particularly towards Xingyi and Bagua and things like that, that which were mm. which were considered these, you know, rare, obscure arts that, you know, were. Um, you know, there's only one or two mm. people teaching it, and unfortunately, well, in in Beijing, it's not rare at all, no. is it? <laughs> well, that's the thing, right? And yeah. lucky guys. Yeah, and the thing about it is, it's interesting to see that you know there are still people holding on to this mentality that a specific expression of you know the first group of people teaching Xingyi or Bagua to, to move to the west, but in the west is the yeah. only and the legitimate expression, and everything else is wrong. And this is why I'm saying, like, the more opening mm. up, not just of China, but of the internet and communication and access, mm. people are starting to see that, hell, you've got guys that are nobodies in a park in, in the middle of, you know, nowhere mm. in Shanxi or Beijing that have such tremendous skill from 30, 40 years of training that mm. aren't interested in teaching. Mm. And you're seeing that there's a whole other, you know, mm. there's a whole other world there. It's like, you know, it's, it's a very interesting and very well-developed world that, most haven't seen really you know it's so i'm glad that mm, i mean gen genuinely genuinely the average like but i mean it's so variable in china yeah. right so yeah. like you know if if you're even even if you're like somewhere else in china like uh, i mean i have some some uh, kung fu brothers who come from jiangxi mm. and you know they, they said like uh, in, in jiangxi like we've never even seen northern martial arts right you know it's so regional right so like you know like the north the north like hebei hebei and, and shanxi like you know the average level is really high there's lots of very good teachers from proper you know decent lineages mm. uh, and i'm sure the same thing would apply to tianjin and yeah. changzhou and all these traditional martial arts uh, you know really strong martial arts culture um 
but yeah, it's it's just when you when you I mean you you know you lived there for how long now? Like permanently over a decade. Yeah, I've been here permanently almost thirteen years. Yeah, perma permanent. Thirteen permanent. years. Thirteen years. Twelve, thirteen years now. So like you know, it's it's so it, it's so concentrated and there's such a high average level. And then when you when you leave there and you you move somewhere else and you're like you know I'm I'm maybe I'm the only person doing this mm. this style in my entire city. Yeah, is that you know, which which is you know probably the situation Raphael is in right, right. now. Right, <laughs> and what about you in Hong Kong? I mean, it must also be it's a lot yeah. less. Hong Kong, Hong Kong, Hong Kong is a is a weird situation now because I'm I'm quite aware of how it was not because I was here but because I sort of I was looking for teachers of other styles. Uh, not not singing. I mean, I'm happy with what I do mm. singing wise. Um, here, here in Hong Kong, and what it seems happened is you know there was the influx of mainland teachers. Well, okay, so the southern styles have always been strong right. here, right? So, the 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 Wing Chun, the Southern Praying Mantis, the the Choi Fight, right. the the Hong Kong, um, all that stuff has always been strong here. And then after 1940, was it 1949? Um, there were all the mainland teachers that came here, good good mainland teachers. So, you know, uh, there was like an influx of you know Yang style representatives, mm. the sorry Yang style Tai Chi, uh, Ichuan people. Mm. Um, the the Wu family moved right, here, family. right? So you've, you've got the descendants of the Wu family still still here. I mean Eddie Wu, Eddie Wu is, is, yeah. is living I've here. I've met him. Yeah. I met him a few times. Um, oh, nice! Yeah. Like he he came for a conference. Yeah, or and actually at that time I was trying to change a lot of the things in the competition format to bring it back to kind of some semblance of what it should be with connection of martial. Uh, I I yeah. sat on a bus with him. And I, we were driving somewhere. It was rather a long ride, and I and I I, I floated what my mm. ideas were, and he really liked it. He, he really liked the idea. Mm. I thought that's a really good mm. direction. Of course, the whole thing never took off because of other reasons. But yeah, it was really interesting. Yeah, reasons. I wanted to bounce. Mm. I bounced it off him. Mm. I bounced the idea of Cheng Jin Lei as well, um, and he liked it too. Wow. So, you know, okay. These are all. These are all. Big. I mean, these are these guys are also head of their families, right? Right. Right. So you know, within within the martial arts circle, they're big. Yeah. Names. Yeah. For sure. So he was nice to talk to Eddie Wu. It was very very nice to talk to. Yeah. I mean, no. I mean, you know, skilled guy and also genuinely a nice mm. guy, which is relatively rare. <laughs> um. So so yeah, there was that influx of teachers here, and then you know, I think the seventy, like basically when Bruce Lee was mm. young. So what is that? Seventies. Yeah. Um, like it was a hotbed of martial arts activity and not just the Wing Chun, uh, you know, what they call Gong Sao, yeah. like Jiao Shan, yeah. right? So all the, the con rooftop contests, yeah. but like, you know, there were internal styles, there were Northern internal styles down here. There was, there was Xing Yi Chuan, there was Yi Chuan, there was Ba Gua Zhang yeah. down here. So here, what is it? It's the Gao, Gao style Ba Gua right. Zhang, which is, oh, so Gao, Gao style and Fu style is also okay. here. Um, so at that time there was tons of active sort of good older generation teachers, mm. but my impression is that a lot of those people emigrated. Okay. They, no, no, no joke. I mean, like I've, I've looked, I've looked for several branches of certain things like certain Bagua or Yichen or, or Tai Chi, like the, the Dong family. I don't know if you know Dong, Dong Yingjie. Yeah, I, I do. Right, so I, I was looking for like people, like good people from the Dong Yingjie Dong family system, uh, and it's just crazy. Like a lot of the the you know like the senior student of several famous teachers, they all immigrated to Canada or the U.S. or whatever. Uh, so actually, to find those branches now, you have to go to Toronto or you have to go to Seattle or you have to go to San Francisco. Okay, I see. Because that's where the Hong Kong people moved to. <laughs> I see. I see. And is it so is it developing nowadays, exactly. well in those yeah, places yeah. too? I don't know. I've, I mean, I've never been. Uh, I've only never been to the to the states once. Okay. So, yeah. so I'm not really. I mean, I'm sure like a lot of our listeners will know better than. Well, me. I've been I've been a few I, I times, like, but I was I was very briefly. You know, I was involved directly with what they called me for specific reasons, whether they had a national trial or a competition, mm -hmm. and. You know, oh, right. I must say, though, that's not a barometer for anything, to be honest, because a lot of the people are not involved in mm -hmm. that at all. So I'd be interested to see uh, like those like Seattle, Toronto. I haven't really I've been there also for a competition like once, maybe 14, mm -hmm. 15 years ago. But yeah, I mean, I haven't had a chance to go look around at what 
but I would I would be interested to see how the local culture and mentality towards training has affected the way they're mm. taught and then what that's mm. resulted in over over time. It would be interesting to see. Well, it's it, the whole th- the whole thing is kind of ironic because. Um, like in, in the UK, you know, e- even up till now, like the sort of connections because of the language barrier and because, you know, it, it previously was very difficult to like just go and live in China mm. for you know, multiple years. Um, we still, you know, what, what you find in the UK is mostly uh, Southern martial arts. Like, you know, Wing Chun is very strong, like Lao, Lao Ga, yeah, yeah. like Liu, Liu Jia yeah. uh, is, is very strong. Like, uh, and then with the, the Northern arts actually are not that so eat. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, maybe there's a couple of Yichang guys now, James, James Cars included. Mm. Um, no, actually, maybe maybe three or four. Okay. Um, but yeah, just still, still very thin on the ground. Whereas with the US, um, do, do you know a guy called George Xu? Yes, I do. He's a Shanghainese, yeah. Shanghainese guy. All right. So, so he during during the late '90s, I think late '90s, early 2000s, he was responsible for bringing over a ton of good Shanghai teachers to to the US. Okay. So I don't I don't know if you were reading the magazines at I that was. time, but so people in in certain parts of the U.S., like I think West mm-hmm. Coast, um, you know, there was a, a stretch of maybe sort of ten years where every year they were bringing over good, like high level teachers for um, not just Chen Sao Tai Chi, but like even like arts arts which were not common or popular at all at that time. So Tongbei, because mm-hmm. Shanghai does have some Tongbei, it's it's He Yi Tongbei. Okay. Uh, so Tongbei, uh, Xin Yi Liu, Xin Yi Chuan. So the the big Xin Yi Liu He Chuan teacher that they brought over was Yu Huang, yes. who's like a, a contemporary of Lu Songgao. Right. Um, uh, who else did they bring over? They brought over lots of teachers. But for seminars and things. Qian Zhao Hong, who is a, but for seminars, um, uh, but also you know those teachers stayed in the U.S. for months at a time. Oh, I see. So, you know, there were, there were people who were studying. I know of people who were doing privates every day with those teachers. I mean, it cost a lot. Of course. But they were doing privates every day with those teachers for months. And so, you know, there was a real window of opportunity there where, you know, a lot of, like, high-level guys went over every year for years. And so the, I, I, I feel like those, there was a chance there to really sort of root it in the U.S. Right. Right, and that doesn't really. Yeah, I'm, I'm, not I'm not sure. I'm not sure whether any of those people kept training or practicing and, and are now teaching. Yeah, I'm could not really be. sure because I, you know, like I say, I haven't. Visited. But it's interesting from from what I saw the few times over the last few years when I went there and I was dealing directly with the national federation and seeing what was going on. I'd say in the more recent times, a lot of the ex professional athletes here started going over there. And what's mm. what's interesting is because they come from a purely sport wushu background and they'd go over there thinking that they're going to be huge successes and they're going to open up these schools where they're going to have piles of people mm. learning sport wushu and then they get there and they realize that like actually mm. no and it, because they live in a bubble here i mean this is the sad truth the 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 yeah china china is its own well bubble. even within china yeah. the sport wushu world is a bubble on its own it's totally disconnected from the minjian <laughs> traditional uh, and you you have you know you've been in that world you know yeah so it, it's funny watching this because <laughs> Like I, I would see these guys going over to to the states, thinking, you know, oh, I'm a national champion. I'm I got the medal in this competition and well, that competition. I was national or provincial team and this. They go over there and they're like, cool. Now we're going to teach everybody all this acrobatic stuff. And they get there and people are like, well, actually, we're more interested in the culture. We're more interested in the tradition. We don't really do self defense. Yeah, we want to do some self defense. Mm. And what bugs me, and you mm. know, this is not to sound too cynical, but what bugs me is that instead of those teachers going out and thinking, you know what, here's an opportunity for me to actually learn, you know, maybe a traditional system, get involved, and then add that because physically mm. they've got all the physical gifts that they could possibly want. They're in great physical condition. So. Mm. I mean, they're great exactly. athletes. So then go in, learn it properly, go and then no. But instead, what they do is they just start rebranding performance nonsense and calling it traditional X, Y, and Z or just learning a, a Xingyi form and saying, oh, I'll oh, teach that's... you Xingyi and this and that. And, you know, unfortunately, that muddies the waters for all the people that are legitimate practitioners and teachers there, right? So, you know, it's a sad state of affairs in my mind. I mean, at a, at a, at a, certain, at a certain point, we have to take a stand yeah. for, for things like that. I mean, because that's that's what, what we want is for the quality to get higher. Obviously. Exactly. It's not lower. Yeah. Well, the, for me, the thing <laughs> yeah, is... So, I mean, that, yeah. that kind of stuff is lowering the pool, well, to be honest. I, you know, for me, the thing is that, like, I know that these... And, you know, the, the, the value that I've had out of these practices throughout my life is the the 
the full package right like the it's not just one thing mm. and this is another thing that takes it takes a bit of time before people get into it that they actually understand this there's so much to these practices when you're doing like a a real full traditional system and training correctly the full yeah. the full system yeah cultural yeah. there's there's the and you know the the combat value of course the historical thing the mm. the what it does for your ball. spirit yeah, your yeah. your mentality yeah. your health it's so good if, if practice correctly and yeah. it's <laughs> and it's a thing that can keep your brain what's the word it gives you something to wake up like a purpose throughout your life right and i mm. want people to to mm. get that and then you've got people that are misrepresenting it with bullshit and and nobody knows the wiser you mm. know for me that's a it's that's that's mm. the issue and it's it's not like, you know, you'll, you'll get a lot of sport wushu people that'll say, oh, you've just got this mentality that's old and closed-minded. No, I don't. You wouldn't know the difference. You don't know the difference because you haven't experienced the other side. All you've experienced is this fluff. Mm. And, and what I'm trying to tell you here mm. about what the value is with all these other things, how would you know? You don't even have the eyes to see, but go take a look and maybe you'll understand. You know, it's very hard to... I mean, okay, look, this, this is something... You know, let, let's get down to like the real brass tacks mm. here. So the the current system in like the current official system in China, like the Xue Yuan Xue Yuan Pai, right? right? You know, is it, all there's all of these like titles and awards and status connected to that stuff, yeah. yeah. Right, connected to you know the the leaping higher, doing doing more spinning kicks mm. or or whatever. And it's really sad because it draws who, people who are natural athletes in into that and. You know, they end up in their 30s or 40s, and yeah, sure, they 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 get titles and positions in in the sports universities in in Shanghai, in Beijing, whatever. But they really don't know much about traditional, like the, the rest of the curriculum. Well, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, and I mean, so it's it's really sad because what it means is that the 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 official academic system is pulling in a completely opposite way to to the way that should be for like healthy development of, of traditional Kung Fu. Exactly. Uh, and you know, like there's all, there's all these, uh, it's really funny to me because, you know, I, I, I see both sides. Like I see what's going on in, in obviously I keep, keep tabs on what's going on back home. And there's all these like worries in China because, you know, people can't fight with the traditional Kung Fu. Like a lot of, a lot of yeah. people can't fight with the traditional systems because they haven't learned the, the fighting part from the shifu. Um and and they're all worried about even I've even had pe I've even heard people get worried about in southern systems like Choi Fat and Hong Kun and, and Wing Chun and all this kind of stuff and it just makes me laugh mm. it makes me laugh so much because these systems are really healthy overseas yeah you know in in Spain in Europe in in America and it's not yeah. because anyone has has particular talent or anything it's because they're teaching it in the right yeah. way with a focus on martial effectiveness and usability. Right, right. Well, I mean, there's a whole other side of things. Like right. So, I mean, people kind of, yeah, they kind of mix up also. They're trying to use MMA as a barometer for the effectiveness of it. Ah, well, and okay. that's also a problem. There is that. There is that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, I mean, I, I saw, I mean, it's just, uh, it's not something I've personally visited, but there, so there was a documentary about this uh, Spanish teacher uh, who has you know a school in in I think Barcelona mm. or something, and so he studied Hong 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 Chen Hong yeah. from the current. Uh, he's the the young son of the previous inheritor, which is uh, Lin Zhenghui. Okay, Lam Chun Fai. Lam Chun Fai. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And his uh, son, Os his yeah, son is Oscar. Oscar Lam. Oscar Lam. Oscar Lam. Oscar Lam. Yes. So I think I think the the Spanish teacher originally studied from the dad and now sort of trains with the mm -hmm. son. Um, and it was just so nice to see because, you know, they had 30 or 40 people every, every, you know, several times a week training traditional stuff and training, you know, traditional two man sets and, you know, light sparring right. and stuff in a tradition, like they were fighting with the techniques that they were taught. They weren't trying to reverse engineer it from MMA. Yeah. They were show they were showing that, you know, the, the old, the system as it was does work if you train it the right way. Yes. Yes, but it's also it's aimed at a particular yeah. environment, and this is why I, you know, when you when it's too blanket statementy kind of, you know, oh, but how would mm. he do in an MMA fight? Well, 
probably not as good as oh, not well. as good as somebody who just does MMA. If it, I mean, that's a no brainer. Yeah, I mean, if you want to win in an MMA fight, do MMA. That's a no brainer, yeah. man. <laughs> I mean, it's it, it's. But I mean, I me personally, me personally, I'm not training for that. So you know, it's it's you gotta. It's using the wrong yardstick, yeah. really, yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to measure achievement. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. But on the other flip side of that is the excuse that, oh, it's not made for the ring is an excuse for people to have no combat ability. So it's like... Yeah, I mean, that's that's just excuse for delusions, yeah, quite exactly. frankly. <laughs> that's, that's, what leads to, that's what leads to the Ma, Ma Bao Guo situation. Right, right. <laughs> oh, Ma Bao Guo, I think there's a whole lot of other stuff going on up there. But anyway, that's, that's, that's up to... Yeah, genuine There's mental something problems. genuinely wrong there. <laughs> genuinely. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it's such a shame because you know he he studied from Shang Ji and Feng Jiao, yeah. right? Yeah. You know, so I mean, both of those are really good old generation teachers, but I just don't know what happened in his. I case. don't know, but if you you I don't know if you've ever met Feng Jiao or ever have you met him before before he passed no i never had the chance to meet him. i saw a friend of mine in the uk is actually uh, his grad okay. student so i've heard a lot of stories but i never had the chance to meet i him. remember when i was training with my teacher like many many years ago before feng jiu chang passed away and um there was a guy a friend of mine from overseas who was wanting to come and learn tai chi you know um in china and mm. and i said to my teacher look he guy wants to come to beijing um who do who do you suggest that that my friend goes to and he's like feng jiu chang he said there's there's nobody else you should go to in Beijing except for Feng Jiuqiang. Just go to Feng Jiuqiang. And he knew him well, you know. And, and you know, if you look at Feng Jiuqiang's teaching method, actually, I don't know if you... You can watch some videos of him interacting with people sometimes in in, in, in China, you know, mm-hmm. like uh, teaching. And mm-hmm. you can see that he's biting his lip half the time with some of these guys, you know. You can see what's going on in his head. It's like, what is wrong with your brain, man? He was a real... What the F is this? this? So I'm not sure how he managed to deal or how his interaction was with Ma Bao Guo, but I can imagine him like thinking something to himself that was completely, you know, different to whatever anybody's saying. Because I mean, you know, knowing how he... Well, I mean, the thing the thing is, he was... Feng Zhuqiang was very... I Actually, I remember there's a couple of things. Obviously, I never met the guy, but... So he... Because he did come to Shanghai, right? I know a couple of the teachers who studied with him when he came to Shanghai. Yeah. Uh, and Shang, Shanghainese people, like the Shanghainese Kung Fu community is actually very hard to impress. Yeah. So uh, they're not impressed by a lot of the current big names right. of yeah. Chen style. Um, and, but when Feng Zhiqiang came, what impressed them was, you know, he offered to do like freestyle push hands mm. with anyone. anyone. Right. He was like, he was like, I don't, I don't have any of my students with me. You just, you, one of you guys just come up and we'll demonstrate yeah. something. Uh, and usually that leads to a challenge, right, right? Right. You know how you know how Chinese kung fu yeah. works, and so some this Wai Jia, like I can't remember which style it was, but like it, quite a well-known like local. Uh, uh, I don't know whether he did like Northern Long Fist or what. So he came up and he was you know he was not cooperating with Feng Zhiqiang at all, and uh, Feng Zhiqiang just sent him flying like a bowling ball, like in into the crowd, like you know several times, yeah. and and that that's how being with him in Shanghai and so and but but and the other thing that everyone who studied with him says is was he was like a grandpa yeah. like in his later years he was really really nice and I can see what you mean about him having to bite his tongue because I'm sure a lot of people came to him from other branches yeah. and from especially from overseas when they studied other stuff and then come to him and say like oh correct my ilu mm. or arlu and uh and he's like where do I start yeah yeah <laughs> You know, can you, uh, can you just learn from Yubei Shi yeah, again? Exactly. <laughs> Jing Gang Dao Dui, let's start, you know. <laughs> Jing Gang Dao Dui, like, you know, <laughs> like, where, where, do, where do I start with yeah. you? I heard a story about him um, on one of, it, one of his times at many, many years ago, the first trips that he went to the States. And um, after oh. a long flight with I don't know how many stopovers in between and he arrived at the airport, oh. coming out of the airport, and mm. one of the local Chinese, you know, I think it was also a Southern stylist, met him and challenged him right there at the airport. And he literally oh, he wow. put his luggage down and sent this guy flying. And, and this was from somebody outside of his lineage re- retelling me this. So, yeah, completely. So, you yeah. know, he, he, he not only was he like, OK, cool, let's do this. No problem. No nonsense. But he had the skills to back it up, too. You know, so. 
I mean, you know, they're, they're obviously, you know, the martial arts community, there's lots of stories flying around, but you can tell a bit about a person based on what other people say from their interactions with him like and no one no one has a bad word to say about him everyone in the beijing community says like he's gone, gone yeah. through, like amongst the the chumpaka students in beijing like he was he was the challenge taker right, right? he was yeah 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 i mean I, actually also one other thing that i've noticed a lot over the years uh, you can tell who's good by who the japanese went looking yeah. for in the early yeah, days yeah. Like the Japanese, I mean, it's it's kind of ironic because you know a lot of mainland Chinese teachers have a problem with teaching Japanese, um, but they because they had very active you know kung fu magazines, bujutsu, yeah. right? So they're they're my you know like I think it's called Wu Lin or, or Wu Shu or whatever, um, and very active magazines who were some of the first people to start publishing really detailed stuff about baji, about dai style xin yi. Yeah. You know, back in like you know pre two thousand, when no one overseas was talking about these right. styles, right? And uh, and so they would come to China and they would look for the famous teachers, um, and in a lot of cases, find out that the the very famous teachers weren't as good as they right. thought, and end up studying with other teachers. So like, so the reason I know about that is because of the Xu and Zhong connection. Okay. So like, they a bunch. Because one of Xu Wenzhong's students was in Japan, like a bunch of Japanese students came over, and they are the only people who got a record of what Xu Wenzhong practiced. Oh, okay. So the only videos we have of his Xin Liu He, of his Shi San Da Qiang, of his uh, combined um, fans and Xin Liu He is from the Japanese. Actually. Interesting. Is that stuff available online? And, and the same goes. Is that? Sorry? Yeah, there's a there's a twenty minute. It's it's partial. It's not the whole. So it's only got snippets mm. of the whole set. Okay. But it's it's about twenty minutes long. Like if you type in Xu Wenzhong in Chinese, okay, you'll find it. Interesting. I'd like to see that. Um, I'll, I'll send you the the, the characters okay. later on, because um, it's, it's nice stuff. But but yeah, just generally like so they came in what is it like the late eighties, the early nineties. They went to um, like for Hao style Tai Chi, for the Dai style Xin Yi, also for the practical. You know the practical Chen right. style, like Hong Jun Sheng. Yeah. So they were, and and, and Feng Zhitian as well. Like Feng Zhitian went to Japan several yes, times. Yes, yes, right? yes. Well, there's a bit of controversy about some stuff that he was teaching there as well that people were talking about. But like, uh, well, I mean, that's the latest yeah. stuff. I mean, the, like his his system did change a lot over time. I mean, I personally, me personally, just from a pure Kung Fu perspective, I I prefer looking at his his. Me too. Stuff. I agree completely. His earlier stuff was. I mean, because like when we like just because we don't we don't do Tai Chi right. Like I you know I, I stopped doing Tai Chi many years ago, but. Like even as Xinyi people, when we look at someone like Feng Zhitiang, you know, doing his his elbow right. set, you know, what is it called, like forty eight yeah, elbows? Like that. that is, an, I mean, just as a Xinyi guy, you're looking at that power and you're going, yes, 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 it, it yes, totally. yes, yes. <laughs> totally. Yeah, my te- I mean, my teacher knew him for <laughs> yeah. a very long time, and he was saying, yeah, that guy's got kung fu. That guy's got kung fu. They got yeah. kung fu, right? You know, which is which is not always the case. Like you know, there are people who have great form. Yeah. You know, they they have perfect form, but you know they they can't show how it actually breaks down into right. fighting, and and Feng could. Yeah, yeah, and also he had the whole body, the whole, uh, very scary body power. I mean, he, he oh, whole body yeah. power. Like especially the thing that I don't see from a lot of people is um, he had the sort of rib uh, contraction, uh, contracting expanding yeah. power. Like what well, what in in some style we call it like xiong lei jing, mm-hmm. right? So like, and I don't see that a lot, even in a lot of other Chen right. style people. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Just from a pure, pure full body, like uh, actually, there's a teacher from a town near Shanghai. Um, he's a senior Liu He teacher, but he, he, the reason he's very popular is because he's been really, really open about the body mm. mechanics. So the the spine right. movement, the the ribs, the the, and which is quite rare. Right for people to actually break it down, yeah, in public. Yeah, normally they don't. Um, and right, and so he's showing some of very similar to mechanics to what Feng shows. So which is which is where you can see actually like a lot of the internal stuff is like the the core is similar. It is the, the power generation. Yeah, it is right across those styles. It's very similar, yeah. and the principles are very similar in terms of structure as well. So. There's, the, the, Body yeah, there's variation yeah, yeah. in terms of certain aspects, but the overall general core is the same, you know, so, yeah. 
Because I mean, if you, if you're looking at generating that huge amount of like you know several like where people where like a relatively light guy can generate you know a couple of hundred pounds mm. of force, um, there's only one or two ways the body can do right. that, really. Well, you right but, like this this much much more power out of like a relatively small. What, guy. what would you say is if you had to try and define the the logic towards Xing Yi Chuan's method of developing and and issuing force? That kind of is somewhat unique. What would you say? It, it, do you have any ideas how you would you would describe that? Well, I wouldn't. The, the thing is, I wouldn't say it's unique because the, 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 these days, I mean, look again. This is just my opinion. I'm just a hobbyist. Like you know, take take it for what you will. But the, the these days, my my view on it is that the the power generation from Xi Chen actually a lot of it is shared between. Um, I mean, di- obviously, Dai style people will disagree, but like between <laughs> Dai, Dai style, Xin Yi Liu He, and even Yi Chen, mm. like if if you're talking about like the the early branches of Yi yeah. Chen, right, do, who still retain a lot of the Xin Yi material, right, right. So if if you're looking at all of those things together, what you see is that um, the key, the core things, like the spinal, so getting power from your spine, your ribs. The, the Dantian movement yeah. and the hips, right? Qua, qua, call it, call yeah. it qua. Um, putting all of that together. Um, so, so from my point of view, actually, maybe maybe this is gonna uh, offend some people. Like, you you don't have to do singi. Like, you know, I'm not I'm not forcing people to mm-hmm. do singi, but I am uh, recommending that people focus on the power generation. Okay. So if you if you are doing singi, really. Go into how you're generating power in your style. How you, how you, you know, the, there's certain movements in Xing Yi where if you don't have that power generation down, you can't generate the short yeah. power. Yeah, totally. Like I, I'm thinking of uh, one particular movement that I was actually practicing mm. last night. Um, um, you know, Ji Xing Siba, yeah. right? So the chicken, the chicken yeah. set. Um, and where you you do the the sort of hidden hidden hand punch where you know you're covering your Gigi hand Shumi. and then you uh, oh Gigi Shumi, sorry I I don't, don't know the posture yeah. names very well the Gigi Shumi, and then you then you immediately turn around 180 degrees elbow elbow to the back and groin groin Gigi slap to the front, <laughs> right uh, Gigi, Gigi Doling, thank yeah. you <laughs> so that movement if you don't have the mechanics down you cannot generate the totally. Power. It's a very important that, that particular yeah, it's, movement. It's a very difficult thing to to do right if you haven't got the basic method right. Uh, the... Yeah, yeah. If, if 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 you if you don't have the power down, all you'll have is like a wrenching your yeah, spine. Yeah, exactly. You actually hurt exactly. yourself. Let me let me throw this back to yeah, to yeah. something we were talking about earlier. Um, you you remember that uh, that tucking the spear and walking away. Oh, yeah. That particular part where you tuck the uh-huh. spear and flick as you turn. Oh, yeah, the, the, the having power in that tiny flick. That technique correlates very closely to Jinji Doling. So you can see how very closely mm-hmm. these these arts are. I mean, specifically Xingyi's pan methods come from spear. And you know, there's this. If you did, if you did Lan Na Jia. With an advancing short step, mm. very sharp. It's very close mm. to Jinji Shumi, uh, that uh, hidden punch. Mm. And then from there, you step back, roll the spear over, and flick as you twist your mm. waist. That's very much like Jinji Doling, right? Oh, of course. The hand and the, the elbow. Right. Now right. you turn around and you pick up your arm with a spear, which is very much like Jinji Shangjia. Turn it over and you can do P and Tiao. And it literally is rooster, but with a spear. It comes from there. Wow! I never put those two things. It's it's so obvious once you yeah. point it out. I never put those two things together. It's... Like, and actually, the, the the even more interesting part of that is like those are probably the oldest components of. Yes. Like, um, that's that's the one set. That's the one set that is common throughout everything. Like, uh, siba, right, right. right? Like, uh, yeah, so it, it, I mean, that makes sense because it's the oldest set that's still in Xing Yeah, Chen. so it's very interesting how you can get that power development and understand it and kind of like the mm. spear just like wakes it up, you know, 
So yeah, that power development mm-hmm. that you're talking about yeah, yeah, right yeah. there, it's there, it's there. Well, I mean, like uh, seeing seeing as an art, right? And I'm sure this goes for the other related sister arts mm-hmm. as well. Like, uh, it, it's it's a, it's based around the powers. So once you have the once you have the powers, right? So you have the why the the names for them differ between you know tiao tiao jing or han right. jing or whatever. Once you have the powers, you can you can make up your own applications. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally, right. So, so th- this is this is why Xing Yi is not a form focused mm-hmm. art, right? You know, you know, other other systems do have you know dozens of forms and everything. Xing Yi doesn't, and there's a reason for that because you don't need a hundred forms. Yeah. You you take those what maybe it's like what is it eight or twelve even? I mean, obviously there's the the five elements and the twelve animals, but actually what I'm talking about is the jin, yeah. the the powers. Um, just take the powers and and come up with your own applications. That's what you. I mean, my my shivu actually sort of challenged me. He's like, my my job is not to spoon feed you. Mm. I I'm going to teach you the the powers in the movements, and it's up to you to see or or work out. You know, I I can give you some ideas, but you really do have you to have do to, the sort of you have to connect the pieces yeah, for yourself. Exactly. You got to make it make it your own as well. That's the other part of it. You make it your own, and I think I think that was part of the traditional training. There was this period where you know you're challenged to make it work for yourself, to make it your own. You know, my teacher said this to me also a while ago when I was, um, you know, after I finished the twelve animals. He said to me, probably around ten years ago, he said to me, um, "You're going to have to find which animals you have the most affinity for and focus them on yourself. They're different for everyone. Uh, They're different for everyone." <laughs> Yeah, yeah, like, and, and and it's very obvious. Like every every shushiong, like every kung, every kung fu brother is better at a certain yeah. animal. Like, uh, and you know, the power immediately they do the correct power. Like for me, it's horse. Oh, okay. Like I love like double horse and single horse. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, for other for other kung fu brothers, it's different, right? Like some guys were really good at dra- uh, dragon straight right. off or, or snake. My right? thing I always liked was I liked yeah. horse, but bear. Bear is just something I've always found affinity with. Bear, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it fits your body type, man. Like, there is a body type There is to, to it, that. for sure. Like, you, we know that Sun Lutang's was was known as uh, being very proficient and uh, had affinity for monkey. Um, so, yeah. Monkey, monkey. Agile yeah, monkey. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Like, uh, But actually, uh, talking about bear, because um, there was a discussion online, yeah. right? So, um, you, this whole sort of applications of bear, like for you guys, like elbow versus shoulder versus chin, like how, how do you see it's, bear? It's all there. As a it's all there. I even remember my teacher teaching me that the the zuan, that first part where you step forward and zuan, we also to start yeah, zuan. we use it mm. as well as a bridge to car- to capture and tie up the arms, pressure down, and then use the top of the head to smash into the guy's face. So we even use our heads. Like the top of the head, the crown. Oh wow! Not not heard that before. That's amazing. So yeah. you you the hand work is yeah, there to literally tie up his hands and pull him a little bit forward. And as you shoot forward, mm. you shoot forward with the top of your mm. head into his face with the top of your mm. head. So yeah, there's that too. So there's a whole lot to it. There's the shoulders. There's the fists. There's the head. There's the elbows. Mm. You know, mm. yeah, it's it's mm. it's very interesting. Um, the spirit is the same, though. The yeah, spirit yeah, yeah. is the same, which is the key, right? So yeah. Well, no, I mean that, that's that's the interesting thing. Like I like I like watching uh, other branches because you get a different uh, viewpoint mm. on, you know, because if you're always like thinking that one animal is a certain application or whatever, you're actually sort of limiting yeah, yourself. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I found that over the years, like, I mean, over it, the years, yeah. I'm t- practicing mm. the animals. I've tried to break and f- identify where the elements are mixed in there in terms of the five elements powers because they're very mm. they're there mm. they're, but they're just mixed in in such different ways between mm. each animal but if you can identify mm. the the elements that are mixed together in the animal you're a lot you'll be, you'll be able to refine mm. that animal a lot better so I mean but the, yeah your under, your understanding of the animals goes up yeah. a level yeah I mean I I'm only uh, sort of half halfway through that process of like trying to recognize, uh, you know, like some 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 ones is very easy. So like for, for us, like tor mm. torsing would just be would just be crossing like the the uh, what you call it horizontal mm. crossing mm. power. Um, but like for others, it is more difficult to sort of figure out. Uh, yeah, the the jin is being yeah. expressed. Yeah, 
Um, I'm sure, I'm sure Raphael would have like more, more input mm-hmm. on that. You, are you guys doing a part two? We will. We'll, we haven't planned which, when we're going to record it, but yeah, I, I, I'm looking forward to that because you know, he, there's a lot of stuff that, that didn't oh, get covered. A lot. Right? There's a lot that he, I mean, it's particularly with his history that we didn't cover. That's interesting stuff to talk about. So yeah, we're going to do a second. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I actually, by, by the way, I actually got connected with him, um, through a Tai Chi teacher, mm-hmm. funnily enough. Um, so there, there's a Tai Chi teacher in Tangshan called um, uh, Ren Zhongxin, okay. right? And uh, I had actually gone there to visit him because I think he's got quite mm-hmm. good skills. Uh, and also, Tangshan is where I learned Chinese, so I have, oh, okay. a, I have a, you know, affinity, I have a connection there. Um, yeah, affinity for that town. Yeah, even though it's like a, you know, it's a terrible post-industrial, you know, Hebei right. town, right? Um, and. Uh, so I, I visited there, and they're, they're very good. I mean, they're very good at what they do. So you know, their their Tai Chi skills are very good, um, and uh, like, and then also Xingyi actually, like he he knows um, Sun Style Xingyi okay. from like an early student of Sun Lutang, like who's who's not well known at all, but had really good skills apparently, um, and that that shows actually in their training. They can do some very nice stuff with their. Um, like they can they can show that thing which not everyone can do where, like say you use a zhuan against a zhuan. Like you you, you know the situation where sort of my jin defeats right. your jin. Right. So like where they're like even though like they can use the same technique like a bung or a zhuan against someone else's bung okay. or zhuan, sure. and because like I'm intercepting your power. Do you, yeah, do you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, zhuan is interesting. Like, jie, jie jin, yeah. like intercept. Right. So one is interesting like that. So yeah, 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 yeah. Like it's not, it's not just like it, what, one guy here in Hong Kong is like. It's just a punch to the chin. I'm like, it's not just a punch to the no. chin. I mean, the <laughs> okay. name, the so name anyway, should already tell yeah, you that, that they weren't just thinking of a punch to the chin. So you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, true, true. The drilling, the, the, yeah, you got to focus on the yeah. drilling power. But anyway, so I actually Raphael had visited their group previously, okay. and so that's how. They were like, oh, yeah, we met a song style guy recently. And I was like, really? And they were like, yeah, that guy from oh, the US. Okay. And I was like, really? <laughs> <laughs> not, not, not common in China. Come on. Like, Raphael does stick yeah. out a bit. Yeah. So, so yeah. that's how you, and okay. then you got a, you didn't, you didn't meet Raphael before? Got in ah, contact. Okay. Got in contact. No, we, we've never managed to meet. I mean, I was like, I was planning to come to Beijing before yeah. COVID hit. So, uh, you know, unfortunately, we never got well, to Well, now you'll have to go to the States to, to see him. Uh, he's over there. Yeah, I'm sure yeah. I will. I'm sure I will or something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. What are you What are you doing with yourself mm. down in in Hong Kong in terms of training? I mean, you're keeping it up yourself. Are there people that you interact I mean, with? Hong Kong, Hong Kong. It's been difficult. I mean, there there is a song style group here, um, and I do see them when when they so they train every week in in Kowloon okay. Park. Um, I, you know, I, I should shout out. So here it's uh, is Gary C and uh, Gordon So. Yeah. Who is? Um, I've I've met both. Uh, from science. I've met both. You've met Gordon. Yeah, Zong? I met him at a. I was giving a presentation at a Wu Xue conference in Hong Kong, in two thousand and eighteen, and so was he. So I met him there. Oh, wow. Yeah, we were there with Malian, okay. Malian so, Jin, so Gary- and, and Hing yeah. Chao and Ma Ming Da. They they were arranging this. So yeah. Oh wow! Okay, uh, I mean, it'd be great if you know. Be, I'd, love, I'd love to you know meet all this you you and all these yeah. people um so yeah gary gary leads the training uh in in Kowloon park and then gordon gordon is uh, obviously runs his own very i think very large company so he's very busy um so yeah there's the the song style group here in hong kong also i was going to a gym here that does shoot boxing ah. but uh you know, given given the way things are at the moment, you know, it's been closed. For well, a few months that, I wanted to ask um, you about that actually. Yeah. Is that Yuki Nakai's branch? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I have honestly I have no idea. I mean, the the gym itself is a couple of Thai instructors actually, okay. but the, what they what they teach is um, the Japanese format shoot okay. boxing. What what is what? I don't know. I don't know where they got it. I honestly don't. Okay. What, like, uh, they might they must have learnt it in Japan. What like, is yeah. the name of the gym? Uh, bomber, Wu, Wu, uh, sorry, Wu Nik. Uh, bomber. It changed its name a couple okay. of times. I think W U N I Q U E. Wu is one of the teachers named Tangua like, or something like that. 
I I don't I don't remember any of the instructors ah, okay. being that name. Like uh, yeah, because I had a yeah. I, I don't know if you, actually she's been on the podcast. She's a Hungar practitioner that lives in 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 lived in Hong mm. Kong. Her name is Veronica Partikova, and she was training at a shootbox gym down there. So I'm I'm thinking it might be the same place. Wait, there's not that many shootbox. There's not many that many places here that offer shootboxing yeah, at all. So I think that's where so... she was. She's le- she's left, and actually now she's in oh, Thailand yeah. for the last month and a half. Right. And now she's going to relocate to Thailand. Oh well. No, 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 not a bad place to sit out COVID. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. It's because of that that she's kind of mm. like, all right. Because she actually is trying to go into mm. MMA professionally. She's trying to get into that. So, But she, she, oh, wow. she's a, she's okay. a Hungar like, practitioner many, many years. Um, that's that's her, her base. Nice, nice, really nice. Like, I, I love that when, you know, to, from a traditional base and then sort of venture into the, the competitive yeah, yeah, arena. Yeah, yeah. You know, because like a lot of people I know, you know, you want to you want to test your stuff against a resisting uh, opponent, and you know those formats are a really good way to test yeah. it out, and and you know learn genuinely learn exactly. something new. But often, often what what they find, like you know, Will, Will would say the same, and I, I know a couple of other guys like Martin, who would say the same thing. Like a lot of times, they find that the traditional stuff works very well yeah. for them, just with a couple of exactly. modifications. That's what I found as well. So mm. I mean. The mm. the like, the whole know, th- reason I continued though with BJJ was because there's a lot of refinement on the floor that we just don't have, right? So, oh yeah, I mean because we don't practice. Yeah, exactly. And we need we need and, 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 and I enjoyed yeah. it quite a lot. So I just I found that it complemented everything mm. I did very nicely anyway. So and it gave me an avenue. Yeah, there's no contra- there's no contradiction or conflict. No, totally. And it gave me an avenue right. with yeah, you know sure. warm warm bodies that were willing to be, you know, thrown around without, you know, <laughs> to be, to be fodder for yeah, your cannon. Exactly. Sorry, that sounds really weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The only issue is that I keep forgetting my age and I think that's kind of part of, part right. of uh, the, the reason why I'm, you know, I think this injury is kind of telling me, Hey, you're, the, the, you're yeah, over 40. You've got to be careful with injuries. You can't yeah. be doing this all the time mm-hmm. with 20 something year olds and early 30 year olds, mm-hmm. you know, got to kind of, balance it out yeah, so. yeah anyway i'm trying to get over it i mean it was it was, it was kind of interesting the uh, the the shanghai tai chi group that i did i used to hang out with because i thought the teachers had skills that's jiang jiang zong uh jiang zong bao's sorry jiang zong bao okay. is uh, his group um they're they're very upfront like they're you know they are very very good at traditional tai chi push hand okay. skills like like not not the shoving not the current shoving competition yeah. format um and and they're they're very upfront about it. They're like, you know, yeah, sure. If because like there's this, I, I've come across it a lot actually, where people think, yeah, I'm doing the shoving style push hands. Therefore, this is they call it they call it shi yeah, right? Yeah. In Chinese, they're like, this is this is combat. Sparring. This yeah, is combat. This is basically, combat sparring. And, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're like, and and they have this, uh, they're under this misimpression that that that's actually helpful for you know or replaces actual spying yeah. um you know and they, they get normally you know those people have gotten very very unpleasant wake-up calls you know multiple times mm-hmm. um so yeah the, the teachers in that group they're very realistic about what they do they're like yes you know we're, we're good at push hands but we know that push hands is is a different skill set to fight right. because because all, a lot of the senior students in that group actually came to him from from quite fighting backgrounds okay. like a like there, so the the main senior student of that group is called Li Xiaolong, not not Bruce the same Lee? characters as Bruce Lee, <laughs> uh, not the same characters as Bruce Lee. <laughs> he gets that all the time, even though he's like you know sixty five year old Chinese guy. <laughs> um, but he, his his senior student is that he came from like a Shuai Jiao Xin Liu background. This is very common in Shanghai to have done that in mm. your younger years, uh, and he's um, really good friends with Qian Ren Biao, who is like was the all Shanghai boxing okay. champion. Yeah. And and he's still is still like a boxing trainer in in I think he has a gym now, um, yeah. So they're very realistic about you know exactly what that is and what that skill set it can be applied to. Right, right. Yeah, that's where it should be. Yeah, which I think is important. Like you need to know, especially in China nowadays. Like you know, there are a lot of people who have delusions and and you know dreams of. You know, okay, I can I can shove around and and therefore that's fighting. Haven't you really haven't important. you noticed there's this. Um... I don't know how to explain it, but there's this certain type of Chinese martial arts teacher that's becoming a little bit more 
prominent today that will willingly show you an application um, that is totally ridiculous, but he will scream at the top of his lungs things like, and, and it's like, it hasn't worked. He's kind of flipping out and freaking out, but it's he's trying to cover it with some sort of attitude as a replacement for the ability. I, and it seems to be come, becoming a little bit more commonplace with some people today. And they, I don't know if they realize that it doesn't work or they've deluded themselves, you know. I, but anyway, have you noticed that sometimes? It's, it, it's quite sad. I mean, uh, honestly, uh, the situation is where I, I'd say it's a bit weird in Shanghai because a lot of teachers don't teach proper applications mm. at all, really. Yeah. I mean, especially if, you, especially if you're talking about like Tai Chi. Um, I would say for the good traditional teachers like Wang Senlin, and also there's another teacher from, you know, Fu Jianqiu? Yeah. Like Fu Jianqiu, the Xin Yichuan. Um, so from his line, very good teacher called Gao Tianyang. Okay. Um, so those teach that sort of caliber of teacher, they would never do that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, you know, uh, but... Uh, it, it, it does happen. Did you say Gao Tianyao? I mean, yeah, yeah. Gao, Gao Tianyao. Gao Tian, he, yeah, the character's really name Gao and then Tianyao. He's in the States. Very un, unusual name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, maybe he is now, but when I was living in Shanghai, uh, he was he was in Shanghai. Okay. Yeah. So uh, so I, I met him. He's he's a really nice guy, really great skills. Um, you know, I, I, I really like uh, the thing. So they practice, you know, they, they the, the, Xing, uh, the Xing Yan, the Bagua, uh, wait, Xing Yi is from Fujianqiu. Is there Bagua from Fujianqiu as well? Could be. Could be. Uh, yeah, they, because they, they're the branch, they had sort of interchange with the Wudang, um, like, you know, the, the abbot of Wudang Mountain, like Xu Ben Shan. Shan's group, yeah. Xu Ben Shan. So, so Fujianqiu apparently went to Wudang Shan and there was interchange. So the Xu Ben Shan learned Xing Yi and Bagua from Fujianqiu and then... I guess Fu Jianqiu learned some things from them as well. Yeah, I mean, that is quite prominent in Shanghai, the Xu Ben Shan derived stuff, mm. which is interesting. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Have you ever met... I mean, but that that, that group... Go on, sorry. Feng, Feng Jun Bao's guys, any any connection you've ever met to any of their, their people in the past? No, I mean, unfortunately, I mean, I do want to meet them because obviously, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the stuff they do, you know, I recognize instantly mm. from, from our training. Um, because we retain some of that. I mean, they would have Feng Zhengbao. Feng Zhengbao did was did really, really well to sort of propagate and and pass on like really directly what he learned from Xu Wenzhong. Yeah. So so Feng Zhengbao is a very good representative of what Xu Wenzhong practiced. Yes, and he's he's one of my. He um, was rest in peace. I'm so sad to hear that he passed away at the end of last year. I didn't know he that. passed away. Yeah. But he was sad. one of my yeah. one of the people I really looked up to, and and my teacher knew him as well. They knew each yeah. other. So I think really yeah, they knew each other. Oh wow! I didn't realize. So okay. and my teacher also I spoke highly of him. Yeah. So I was very sad mm. to hear I mean, that he's gone. Really, really nice skill, really good skill. I mean, he must have trained intensively. Yeah. I, I don't know much about how his his training history with you and John, mm. but like he definitely got it. You can yeah. see from his movements and his power. Um, so yeah, it's, I've, I've been wanting to meet the Japanese group for a while, mm. but um, I, I've actually been to Japan, you know, multiple times, yeah. obviously, yeah. you know, been living in Hong Kong pre-COVID, it's very easy. But uh, I haven't managed to connect up with that group, I think because they're not in Tokyo. Uh, they're quite far away. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's a, I, I want to say it's like a smaller city quite away from Tokyo. So yeah. Well, you know, I'm, I'm it's, it's on my list. You know, do you know, Simon Lockett, I've had him on the past podcast as well. He's in Japan. Um, and he studied for quite a bit of time with, with Feng. He did his Bawa. Um, and uh, really? yeah yeah he did oh sorry i wasn't well i didn't catch that that episode it's one what, of the what, early ones uh, it's mark master andrea and simon lockett together it might have been the second podcast or the third i don't even remember oh wait they were talking i do have a memory of, of uh, the other guy sorry what's his mark, name mark andrea Mas, mark Mas, andrea? Master, andrea. Mark andrea. master andrea master andrea Master and yeah. okay, right, because they were talking about their Bagua studies in Beijing. Right, right? so they afterwards uh, studied more with Xu Shushi mm. in Beijing. Of um, Xu Shushi, yeah. uh, but but yeah. Simon li and he still does. He still lives in Tokyo. He li he's lived there for a, 
good number of years i think over 20 and he studied with um with feng he did his bagua with him uh, back in the day so uh, what, can you can you send me his contact sure, details sure, i would sure. love to connect up yeah. i mean tokyo tokyo is easy right like you know yeah. i mean japan has just reopened so i mean i'm i'm <laughs> planning to go this year so yeah you should definitely go see him i mean the guy yeah, trains yeah. hard as well they by, by, by the way uh, just just content like my wife speaks japanese oh. quite well so <laughs> interesting like uh, it's it's very easy for us. Like when we go there. Oh wow! Well, that's that's handy. I mean, I I, I speak a, I speak a little bit, but just tourist Japanese. I can count I can count to ten, and I can tell them all the judo throws that I remember from when I was young, and some of the karate <laughs> techniques, and that's about the limit. Yeah, uh, yes, uh, <laughs> exactly. Mawashi Giri or Sotogari, you know. <laughs> which which your average Japanese is just like. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway, that was. That was yeah, yeah. No, that's cool. Was there anything that yeah. that? No, I'd lo I'd love to connect up with. Yeah. That. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll send you his details. What I wanted to say was, was there anything that you mm. wanted to discuss that we didn't discuss? Do do. do I mean, any, any topics? Uh, what's uh, I I don't know. Do we want to cover some of the historical stuff? I mean, you mentioned your researches into Li Jianqiu right, and the right. Republican era. Well. People? We could do this. Right. I mean, because it's two and a half hours, and I don't know how how long people. Oh yeah, sorry, it's been really long. What yeah. what we can do is this: we can do a follow up, and we'll talk about some specific historical things. We kind of mentioned them before we started recording, and we didn't touch on almost any of them. But we could in the next uh, week. Yeah, we'll do something yeah, a little yeah, bit no, more I focused. Think I, that would be nice. Yeah, be nice to do a more focused one on that stuff because I I know you're re I'm really interested in that I know you've done a lot of research into that so I think that'd be cool. Yeah. Oh, and another interesting thing that I forgot to mention that I wanted to when you were talking about those early Japanese guys that came and and uh, in the early days and you could tell who. Oh yeah. And they've done a lot of recording and research. Yarek mentioned that some Japanese guy that he knew had done extensive research into the history of Shingi and Shinyi Liuha and all of that and he's got a he's got a whole trove of very interesting like evidence-based research that he's he's dug up that's quite mm. interesting and I don't know well I mean we we need to oh really Byron we need to talk to the Japanese forum members or the listeners of this podcast yeah. right because I know from friends that there was a Japanese the Japanese magazine did a, a really long series on uh, the whole different, really obscure branches of uh, Xin Liu He, mm. comparing them to modern Xin right. and, and Dai style. Yeah. And like, so like it's branches that are not even like, you know, um, Guo Wei Han. Yes. So Guo, Guo Wei Han's branch as is passed down now. There's also apparently like a, um, like Shui, Shui, Jia Xin Liu He. Okay. Like, like literally water. Uh, and they are, apparently their practice is closest to what uh, die, the Dai family would have learned back, back in the day. Then. Oh, very interesting. They're like like a like a, a halfway house between. Um, it, it's really I've seen like a very short video of that stuff, and it's it's really odd because it's like midway between everything. Mm -hmm. It's midway between Xingyi and midway between Xingyi Liu He and Dai Star. Oh, very interesting. Yeah. Yeah, really interesting. Um, so yeah, uh, as part of that series, they must have taken like footage as well yeah and yeah we need to find we need to find the editor of that magazine from that time i think the magazine has gone bust i think i think a lot um, of those magazines like, are they gone. they have yeah i mean because there's no market yeah. anymore but but i mean they must have some gold hidden yeah, away sure. from, from a martial arts perspective i would love i mean you know i would give my right arm for some of that footage um I'd like to and see some, the footage, but I some of Yarek's footage. Yeah, I like I like my right <laughs> arm too much, but but yeah, I'm I'm with you. I'm yeah, yeah, with yeah. you. So, yeah, Yarek as well. Yarek as well. I mean, he has all of this. What is it? I think it was filmed on Super Eight. Yeah. Um, he has all of this footage from the early '90s uh, of master. You know, a lot of uh, old Hebei masters who have passed away yeah. now from Shenzhou. Yeah. Like, I mean, you know, I've, I've sort of dropped heavy hints to Yarek over time from time to time. Like, hey, Yarek, how's the, uh, you know, remastering process going? <laughs> it's not. He's, he's, I mean, if you watch his Facebook, <laughs> the guy is, he's, he's on the move all the time. Yeah. He's on the move all the time. Yeah, yeah. He's, 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 he's focused on other yeah. stuff now, which is fair. That's, that's his interest nowadays. It's, it's normal. I mean, that was, that was 25 years ago, right? So, yeah. you know, he's, uh, you know what I did hear though? Like he still practices, but he's, yeah. my, my, yeah. my teacher told me, and this was confirmed that I, I spoke to some of the officials here, but my teacher told me back in the day when they were doing the Chinese Wushu Wajue Zhengli, 
you know, the the Oh, oh, Wajue Jolie. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember and, hearing and, that. And, you know, Kanga Wu mm. and all of those people. And, and my teacher was, was uh, they asked him to help with certain parts of collecting records with uh, some of this Bagua and Xingyi groups and whatnot. And my teacher told me, these mm. people, they filmed a lot of the old masters way back then. They Like the entire system. They filmed yeah. them. He said they filmed these people, their practices, and they've been sitting on this shit for 40 years. He, he said... Well, 30, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do, do you know, I heard about that thing, but not in a Xingyi or Bagua context. I heard about it in a Tongbei context because I was looking into some some branch of Tongbei that's popular in Dongbei. Right, right? yeah. And, um, and I was looking into, like, this system, and it mentioned that during the Wajue Zhengli campaign, yeah. they had visited these old teachers yeah. in Dalian, Right, because a lot of the teachers for that branch were were in Dalian, yeah. and they had filmed the entire system at the time, and and again they've been sitting on this footage for thirty five years, well, and never released it. And I've asked some of the people that when I was working with them, I said, "Do you have this footage?" Yeah, we got the footage. I said, "Why aren't you doing something with it?" And I kind of heard through the grapevine that a lot of it had been it's been sitting for so long that it's been destroyed by mold. Oh no. So this is like such a oh, God. such a tragic, you know, you know, you're so focused on all this so other Byron, crap. like okay, genuinely, genuinely, like cuz you have contacts in the Sport Wushu Federation yeah. or whatever. Do you know anyone who could get one of us access at least to see the footage? Yeah. Well, when I kind of press I mean, this is genuinely for like practitioners all around the yeah, world I would agree would kill for well this. i kind of pressed it with somebody that i knew back then and i said listen i'll be willing to digitize it for you guys and and and, and you know do for free and, yeah I'll, I'll do it yeah and they took they actually got they got a bit threatened by that i don't know why so i don't know maybe it's the wrong person it was the wrong time but i'll try again oh okay i mean so where where, where are do, where is this footage like is it, it's in beijing at one of the uh, professional academies at the chinese wushu association in their storage in their archives yeah. in beijing yeah. it's an ending man you won't get access I guess, I guess you have to be you have to be an insider yeah. to get access yeah. to you it, won't huh? get access i mean you can't even get into their office that is, that is such a shame because you know why why I sort of am keen on this because Yarek mentioned that when you know when he went to Shenzhou, which is you know like is the the Dabaying mm. for Hebei Hebei one of the Dabaying for Hebei Xing, like actually uh, the the way that their Shenfa right the the way that they practiced mm. was how do I put this like. You could see some traces of the die style. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So more obvious bowing and unbowing yeah. and the rounding, all this kind of stuff. Very interesting. Right. So, so I would, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, cause, cause he, he himself filmed uh, an old teacher called uh, Lu Feng Shan, mm -hmm. right. Um, who had learned from uh, Li Luoneng's grandson. Was that Li Zhenbang, right? Yeah. I think it's Li Zhenbang, yeah. So he'd learned, uh, or he was, maybe it was his father who learned from, from Li Zhenbang. Mm. Um, and so the way that they, like Yarek said, the way that they practiced was very interesting because it was, again, it was showing the original traces of Dai style that sort of, it's, I, I mean, I'm not, it just got ironed out by the time it sort of got to Tianjin, right? Right. Yeah, that's interesting. Like, I, I'm not I'm not saying the underlying power generation changed, but I'm just saying like the traces were more obvious in the way that they practiced. Yeah, yeah, interesting. Now, mm -hmm. Li Zhenbang, I'm trying to think now. What you you're looking for the name? No, I I mean I remember yeah. the name. I'm just trying to remember. Mm. I mean, yeah, who would have who would have gone down from there? Anyway, what do you mean? Who would have? I mean, how would we tr well, no, no, trace I, I that? I can tell back? you that. I can. Well, they, they, so they technically there still is. So um, there, there technically still is a guy who is representing that line, but it's it's a bit odd because the way that he practices is, is not the same as like according to what Yarek said is not the same as what Liu Fengshan himself mm. did. So there's there's a guy there's a guy who claims to be like a Li Luoneng descendant. His name is Li Zhijun. Okay. You mean familial uh, descent? Yeah, yeah, he was. Well, he, 
I I have no idea, right? Uh, so 志志志气的志 ，and then 军队的军 ，right? And so he's a student of Liu Fengshan, but the weird thing is his shenfa is different. Wow,、oh. and、uh, a little a little bit different.、Uh, and so, yeah, it's a bit odd. So like the 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 guy who actually directly studied with Li Zhengbang is Liu Guozhi. Ah, so he's Liu Fengshan's dad. Okay, okay, right. But apparently, like Liu Guozhi was very good. Like he actually taught taught in the army in Zhang Xueliang's army. Oh, interesting. Yeah, Zhang Zhang Zuolin, Zhang Xueliang. Can't、uh, you know you know that that, that warlords. Yeah. Army, but、basically. you know that that's、yeah. a lot more common than we actually realize. How how many of these these、uh, people had some connection? Yeah, got co opted to teach the army、yeah. at that period of Chinese history,、yeah. right? I mean, Shang Yunxiang was was it the Da Dao? Yeah, well, the, what, is it called Da Dao? Well, yeah, I, th- I mean, Shang Yunxiang was one of them. So many of them, if so many of these people in that Republican era, I mean, were teaching. Some、mm. form of military, something or other, you know, whether it be in Beijing or outside、yeah. outside of Beijing. Yeah, it's yeah. very interesting. Yeah, so Song Song Guicheng taught in the Shanxi Army. Yeah, yeah.、Uh, and and、uh, like and that was actually where the, his、uh, straight sword set came from. His experiences、ah. in the army. He he、uh, he, he devised the this、uh, is quite quite practical straight sword、mm. set because because you know a lot of like Jian Jian sets can be very flowery, right? Right, but but that that one isn't. That one is like a very <laughs> to the point. You haven't you、thing. haven't done. You said you haven't done Jian yet, right? You haven't really done. No, I mean, well, that's that's why that's why I'm really keen on learning that particular set、okay. because I heard it's based on his experiences teaching the. So there was a warlord in Shanxi. I can't.、Uh, it's it's one of the battalions of that army,、right. and so he was a he was a wushu instructor for that battalion, and、uh, yeah, so that he came up with that Jian set based on those experiences. Yeah. It's called Jian Dou Jian. Okay, nice. Also,、well, interesting name as well.、Mm. You、mm. know, our Jian,、yeah. like that, my teacher teaches again. It starts obviously with five elements individually, five elements linking. We've got Sun Tai Jian, which is actually、mm. a partner、uh, practice. Oh, Sun Tai Jian, it's Dui Lian. Yeah,、right? it's Dui Lian. It's a partner practice. Yeah, yeah. Then we've got、uh, mm. Liu He Jian.、Mm. Uh, Liu He Jian is. It's not really what I've I've seen some Liu He Jian out there, but ours is. Quite a bit different because it's six lines, and each line is f-、mm-hmm. it's focused on a different topic, you know.、Uh, like the first is Jinbu Liu Jian, the the second line is Tui Bu Liu Jian, you know things like that.、Um, oh, feng, okay. Feng Lun. I mean, and, and the and the techniques, the techniques are like the the because I know for like sword, like it's like often Dian Chan.、Mm. Like you know, there's there's key characters, right? Yeah. For for the sword techniques. Well, there's a lot of Dian, but um, and but it's very practical. That's what I've found about everything that's in there. It's very practical, very to the you know to the point of function.、Uh, it's not flowery at all, and it's Dian. So、oh, interesting. So Liu Liu He Jian. Yeah. Do you know Do you know where that Liu He Jian comes? Well,、from? my teacher says ours comes through Li Chunyi, and it was. Similar to the one that he he was teaching at the military academy, right? And whether he compiled、oh, it himself or、okay. not, I don't know. But、um, do you know? Do you know what I should have asked?、Uh, you you know we did that the series visiting the the Tianjin yeah. people.、Um, you know I I should have asked. So Zhang Jun, who's like also Li Chunyi、mm. branch.、Mm. Um, yeah, I I I personally was very impressed with his practice.、Yeah. Like he's、uh, you know if if he wants if he wants to e- enter. You can't stop him. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, I,、uh, I like what、uh, what we he, saw in the video、yeah. as well. Although it was limited, you had much more experience with him. Yes.、Yeah, so. yeah, no. I mean, I said to him at the time, like, I, I was going to go back, but you know, COVID. I, I will. The moment I can go to Tianjin,、mm-hmm. I'll definitely because he, he's a really lovely guy、yeah. as well.、Um, but yeah, so he was. He had his Jian that day,、mm. but we didn't get to see his Jian. His Jian form,、okay. and he. I remember. I vaguely remember him mentioning that it was called. Liu He Jian.、Mm. Okay, good. It might might be very similar. So that makes sense. That makes sense between you guys. Yeah, it, it might be very similar. And、um, I do one or two of the techniques from that set in that little Jian highlight video that I made in December. There's a few a few techniques here and there of it.、Um, oh, I have to go back and look at the, that set. Actually, I haven't I haven't clicked on. But、that. you know, I did a whole bunch of、mm. techniques. I did some element practice just. Bits and pieces here and there,、mm. but you can see that the the、mm. you know the the funga the 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 expression is very much to the flavor. Yeah, the、mm. flavor is very much to the、mm. 
to the function and mm. the, the use, you know, um, mm. you know, so yeah, I, I like that. That's really nice. Like uh, the all the 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 对练, right, the paired mm. drills, like o- often often the systems with paired drills tend to preserve more of the actual usage right. of the right instead of getting into all the like flowery wrapping movements and stuff. Yeah. And you'll see a lot of overlap with techniques that you use in a broadsword. So there's, you know, this is the other thing that people seem to get a bit weird. I think a lot of the time people do Jian for the sake of doing Jian. So they're trying to make Jian look as Jenny as they think it should look. You know what I mean? And, and mm, I mean, it's, Jian for the sake of exactly, Jian. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you know, a sword is a sword. So there's going to be certain mm. techniques that overlap between the two. You know, it's not going to be. Mm. Uh, I mean, to me, to me, like a, a, a stab is a stab, a slash is a slash, right? right? So, like, even even with with the end of a staff, mm. you can do like a dian type. Yeah, we do. Yeah. I mean, you can use the end of a staff to do like a stabbing, like a chore. Yeah. Um, but so, like, to be honest, I think once you get good with one weapon, a lot of it is transferable. Yeah. yeah. Uh, by by the way, I don't practice it, but the Hong Kong uh, group here. They have a, a biengan set, oh. a whip staff set, which their teacher learned from some guy in Shandong. Okay. Uh, and it is a really, really nice set because it's like a combined set where some guy has taken jian, mm-hmm. dao, and, and qiang techniques. Ah, good. And it's all hidden within the whip staff set. Well, that's, I mean, that makes sense. Like, so you can, you can, you, like, if you, if someone like you watch that set, you would just be like, okay, that's a, that's a staff technique. Mm. That's a broadsword technique. That's a spear technique. It's amazing. It's a really oh, nice set. It it's, it's quite long, but the techniques are really good. Yeah. yeah. Like you can, you can see, it's really obvious, like where, you, like you'll have like a, a land, uh, right? So where you said disarm, using the, the power to disarm. Yeah. And then there's like a slashing movement, but with a whip staff. Like uh, you know, it's 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 great. It's a really oh, nice. Sounds set. interesting. Like, uh, I'm glad they uh, they practice that. Yeah, yeah, very interesting. Well, all right, mm. let's 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 anyway. end it there for today. Yeah, sorry, it's yeah, it's two and a half hours. Sorry, no man. problem. I, they're they're supposed to be long, but I didn't want. I mean, I could carry on with you, no problem. Yeah. But I think maybe it, we should we should just no, do I, a follow up. I, I don't want to get you in trouble with with your wife. Like, ah, no, no, <laughs> she, she's used to it. She she knows that my first wife is martial arts. She knows that. So, <laughs> my my wife is not so understanding. Ah, okay. I, I I think I've got some uh, angry messages on my WeChat. Ah, really? Okay. <laughs> well, my wife is a martial artist and was, so she kind of understands it a bit better. So, you know. Oh, that's great, man! It's a love love for martial yeah. arts. That's yeah. cool. <laughs> anyway, all right. So great chatting okay. to you. It was a very varied co- uh, conversation, but we'll follow up with some focused stuff in the next one. We'll just plan it and. Who knows? Maybe I yeah, definitely. Let's do a part two. Yeah, hope maybe mm-hmm. I can convince Yarik and we'll do a, 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 a one together, the three of us. So that would be really interesting. oh, that would be perfect. That would be so. I mean, you know, uh, you you know, Yarik is like a, the fountain of information. Yeah. Right? on on like multiple styles. Yeah, but he's but um, he's and and yeah, definitely he's yeah, he's also on. like a specter, so it's very hard to actually. Yeah, catch yeah, him. he's he's uh, hard, hard hard to pin yeah. down, and that's that's even. From from me from living in the same city as him, exactly. right? Like you know, it's very hard to even see him even when you live. Right, there. right. So we'll 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 try we'll try plan for that. But either way, we'll do this t- we'll do this again. Yeah, yeah, we'll try our best. Right. So yeah, have a good day. You bro. too. Have a good. Great talking. Great to talking to you too. Bye bye.